Nebraska, 5'11", 205. Mike, I've always felt it was very important for the underdog to get off to a great start. You really, and you especially at home, because you want to keep your crowd in the ball game. But when you face Nebraska, you're facing a lawnmower coming at you. I mean, they, you have to stop their running game. We are set to go from Lubbock, Texas. Benning from the three. Just gets back to the 22-yard line and stacked up there. Lawrence Phillips, the newest Husker eye back. In the season opener, he rushed for over 100 yards, averaging 5.3 a carry. Junior Reggie Ball, one of Nebraska's famous walk-ons. He gives the Cornhuskers blazing speed on the outside. Up front, Zach Wieger, a preseason All-American and Outland Trophy candidate. He has been all-conference since his sophomore season. Phillips is the eye back. Fumble on the snap, but Frazier gets it back and gives to Phillips. Room to run over the right side, brought down after a gain of about four. Byron Wright is one of four seniors along the defensive front for Texas Tech. He leads all of the Red Raider linemen in tackles. Zach Thomas, a terrific linebacker who led the club in stops a year ago. Last week, he had an interception return for a touchdown. His older brother, Bart, will start at safety. A 92 starter, he quit the game for a year, but has earned the job back again. Second and six for Nebraska. Frazier on the ever-dangerous option. What a play coming up from the left linebacker, Robert Johnson, to stack up the option. And, Mike, that's the textbook way to play it. It's the right way to play it because you get pressure from the outside linebacker. Robert Johnson, number seven. You force, first of all, Tommy Frazier to pitch the ball. Then you beat the block. Of Cluster Johnson, number 33, Robert Johnson with the tackle. And you like to put Nebraska in third and long yardage. 51, Jabbar Thomas on defense had Frazier, so everyone was covered, and it's third and eight. Four man rush, Frazier with time to Phillips. And Phillips gets it up to the 33 yard line. That'll be enough for a first down. Brought down by the linebackers, Johnson and Thomas. I believe the difference in this Nebraska football team in the last two years is number 15, Tommy Frazier. Came out of high school, Bradenton Manatee High School, a highly recruited quarterback, but he has more poise now, which is obvious because he has more experience. But his passing is much better, Mike, now. And if you have an option quarterback that also has the ability to throw, you've got the total package. Phillips, power sweep, blockers in front. Still on his feet, knocked out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. Zach Thomas made the tackle, but he had Wiegert at 300 pounds and 6'5 out in front of him. Brendan Stye, the right guard, number 66, and number 72, Zach Wiegert. When you look at two 300-pounders pulling, you just try to get in their way and take them out. If you're on the defensive side, you just don't want them to work up the football field. Second and a short two. Wiegert, number 72, and Stye, as good a combination as they have ever had on the right side of the Nebraska offensive line. Frazier off the action, back to throw, straight down the middle, ball! Reggie Ball was wide open. It hit him in the hands, and he dropped it. If Frazier had that one to throw again, he might get a little more air under it. Well, Tommy Frazier talked to me yesterday, and he was talking about when our passing game really comes around, we're going to be something. You see Reggie Ball drop the, drop the football, but he said in the West Virginia game there was a lot of balls dropped, and he said then I was high on a bunch of them. He said, we need to get our passing game down. Now third and short. Frazier... Cuts it up. Tommy Frazier off to the races. 20, 10, touchdown. <laughs> 58 yards on the option. He was so patient, just waited for it to open up. I 
Mike, the toughest thing to do when you play an option team is you have to have assignments. The free safety really looks to me like the player who is going to be a second guy on the quarterback, but he got caught up in all the congestion up inside. And Tommy Frazier is a tailback playing quarterback when he breaks in the secondary. Well, you can see the speed. A couple of defensive backs looked like they had a shot at him. He just ran away from Sealer is on for the point after. And it didn't take Nebraska long to get the lead. The number one team in the country after 2.01 off the clock leads it 7 0. Hey, guys, farm report. <laughs> Surfing championships. Well, let's, let's watch both. both. Miller Lite presents Cowabunga. Serves oh. oh. up. Come on, yeah. And so is Bessie. She's not just swatting flies <laughs> now, Bob. Brought to you by Miller Lite. If you can combine great taste and less filling, you can combine anything. <laughs> She's riding this one all the way back to Wisconsin. What a cow. <laughs> what a beer. Great taste, less filling. Can your beer do this? Sure. Well, he carried the ball once on the opening drive. Went 58 yards for a touchdown. Completed one pass. Should have completed another one. That would have been a touchdown. The drive only took two minutes and one second. Darren Erstad will kick off. He's also the punter, the long field goal kicker. This kid has a tremendous leg. He'll be kicking to Matt DeBuck, 24, and Stacy Mitchell, number six. Mitchell had a 50-yard kickoff return a week ago. Look at this. Out of the end zone. This kid can crush it. Tony Darden is one of two redshirt freshmen working at quarterback for Tech in the opener. He had seven of 13 passes for 92 yards. The club lost its top five receivers from last season. Field Scoville solidified his starting spot with seven catches in the first game. Scott Fitzgerald, the veteran of the offensive line with 19 career starts, he takes over at center after playing guard a year ago. The goal of the tailback, Alton Crane. And that Nebraska defense is solid. First year starter Christian Peter had quite an impact in the season opener. Seven tackles, two and a half sacks. Troy Dumas is one of two Butkus Award candidates for Nebraska. The former safety has tremendous speed for a linebacker. And Baron Miles was an all-conference corner a year ago, one of the fastest players on the roster. He's a Thorpe Award candidate for the best defensive back in the country. Darden on a roll. No place to throw and steps out of bounds near the line of scrimmage. You don't think there are butterflies for a redshirt freshman quarterback playing number one? Well, he's looking at a little bit different defense than he did last week against New Mexico. New Mexico is a pretty good ball club, but you're looking at a very good defense. Here's his numbers in high school. 45 touchdown passes. Holmes High School in San Antonio. They have to get him on the corner, Mike. He uses speed, and he's a very accurate passer. But trying to get outside on Nebraska will be a task. Third and long. Time to throw. Deep sideline and overthrown. Good coverage back there by Tyrone Williams, who's coming back off of a one-game suspension, a disciplinary suspension. They were throwing for Matt DeBuck. Second fastest player on the roster, runs a 4-4-40. It's not the way you want to start the game either. Three plays and out, and Tommy Frazier's back at your defense. That's what West Virginia did the entire ball game. Three and out in the uh, season opener, and they were just crushed. I think Nebraska lost a little focus in that game. They got up real quick, and uh, sometimes that can happen to you. You score too easily. Brad Kane to punt to Kareem Moss. Beautiful punt. High Sailor Moss at the 34. No place to go. Excellent coverage. 47-yard kick, only three on the return, and George Ramsey was downfield to get the first hit on special teams. For Texas Tech to have any chance in this ball game, Nebraska has to help them. They've got to make some mistakes, put the ball on the ground, and again, you're looking at a veteran quarterback now, three-year starter, Tommy Frazier, who doesn't make many mistakes. Well, they had the turnovers in the first game, but West Virginia couldn't take advantage of any of them. And I think that was a tribute to Nebraska's defense. Phillips on the straight handoff this time. Powers into the middle of the line, gets up to about the 41. 
course, Frazier will remind a lot of people of Turner Gill, the former great Nebraska quarterback who is now the quarterback coach. And it's interesting, Turner Gill did not feel like he was ready to play as a freshman. He told Coach Osborne, he said, I think I'll stay on the JV team. Of course, that's when they had a couple hundred players playing at Nebraska. So he didn't play as a freshman. Tommy Frazier came in right away. They knew he could play as a freshman. And as a junior, he is a legitimate Heisman candidate. Full house backfield. Schlesinger, the fullback, will get his first carry. Lunges forward near the 45-yard line. Zach Thomas, inside linebacker, made the tackle. When, when Tommy Frazier came in here, he had to beat out a fifth-year starter, Mike Grant, who was going to start that year. And last year is when the leadership really developed because he played hurt. Hurt ankle at the beginning of the year in the first ball game, hurt his shoulder against Colorado. And that's what the Nebraska coaches feel like. He developed his leadership because the players respected him for playing hurt. Third and three. Movement. Frazier gets away from the pursuit. First down and more. Frazier into Texas Tech territory at the 37. Now let's go back and check the flag. Would be a gain of 17. Texas Tech looked like they were showing blitz. Let's see if they jumped or Nebraska did. And it will go against the Huskers. There's a break for Texas Tech. Texas Tech has to have those breaks. Tom Ehlers, our referee out of the Big Eight. Illegal motion on the offense. Five yards, previous spot, repeat the down. So instead of third and three, they go back to third and eight. You remember the first third down situation? They went to a one back, and uh, Tommy Frazier threw the ball to the shotgun. They're back in the shotgun again. Holbein, Ball, and Muhammad are the wide receivers. And now they put Phillips out there with him in a slot. Swinging out to Phillips. Phillips hit twice behind the line, dives forward, and is going to be close to a first down, although it looks like they're marking him out a yard short. Bart Thomas made the tackle. Can't miss those type of tackles against Nebraska. Of course, Lawrence Phillips makes you miss. It's going to be fourth and a yard. Wouldn't be surprised, I'll tell you, when I was at Kansas one year, my first year we played in Nebraska, it was fourth and eight. They had the ball on their own 40-yard line. I said, we stopped them, and they're going to punt. And they lined up in the eye and then just moved the ball down the field. That's the thing. It's really discouraging for you as a coach on the other sideline. Here they go again. They're going at it. Here comes discouragement or elation. Fourth and a yard. Tight formation. Phillips. Zach Thomas. Huge play. Spike Dyke said he is everything you could want in a linebacker. He could play anywhere. Said he should have been in the 1950s. What a big play early in the ball game. Number 35 right side of your screen. Scraping makes the tackle on Lawrence Phillips and you talk about a big play. Now the freshman redshirt freshman quarterbacks have to take advantage of this. Are you the kind of guy who'd want to go for a big play first down? Right off the bat. I'm going to try to go down the middle deep. Instead, they'll give it off to Crane, the tailback. And he'll pick up about four or five yards, and that's got to be a big boost to that offense. Alton Crane replacing Bam Morris, virtually a consensus All-American. He's a 5'9 senior, the guy we're looking forward to seeing, to seeing in that spot. Byron Hanspard, the freshman, who had a choice between coming to Texas Tech and Notre Dame and chose Texas Tech. Interesting story that we'll get into a little bit. He was also recruited by Nebraska. Crane again, same play, big hole. Alton Crane to the 33-yard line. Kareem Moss, the rover back, made the tackle after a gain of nine. Mike, they're confusing Nebraska a little bit. They're coming out of the huddle and sprinting to the line of scrimmage and not giving Nebraska a chance to adjust to their formation. Watch them break the huddle here and sprint to the line of scrimmage. That's the kind of thing Nebraska usually does, that quick rhythm offense not to give you a chance to breathe. Back to throw. Darden has time going deep for the end zone and just overthrew. 
throw, the intended receiver, Sheldon Bass, who caught eight a week ago. Bass had the man beat, and Darden overthrew him. Sheldon Bass against Baron Miles, number 14. Freshman 5'10", 170 with a good route. He's open right here. He'll get some help. Baron Miles will get some help in the safety late, but uh, Sheldon Bass was open for a score, Mike. Well, I like to call, too. Try to get the score. Nebraska showing blitz. Great. And the quickness of Nebraska as Mike Mitter came up from the safety spot to make the tackle right around the line of scrimmage. Well, this Nebraska team is built on speed defensively. They're early in the game, their whole plan is to try to rattle these quarterbacks, but they're going to have trouble getting to them because they're so quick at getting rid of the football. This is versus West Virginia. Eight rushing yards, 89 total yards, one for 13 on third down conversions, and that's exactly what Texas Tech has right now. And the rush yards against one of the best backs in the nation, Robert Walker, gained over 1,200 a year ago. Third down and long. No place to throw it, no place to go. Sack back at the 37-yard line. Tony Darden just couldn't find anyone to get the ball to. Christian Peter, 55, Dwayne Harris, 86. See the wide rush there by Dwayne Harris, number 86. Just gets by the back. Alton Crane puts a little pressure on Tony Darden, but really what happened to him, his receiver was knocked down in the secondary. Harris, really a linebacker, but lines up as a defensive end. It's fourth and 15, and Texas Tech is going to try to pooch punt it down inside. Brad Cade will hit it from around midfield. Kareem Moss waits back at the 10. Very high. And Tech downs it at the two-yard line. They couldn't have drawn that one up any better. We've got a 7-0 game. Nebraska over Texas Tech. Time to go first quarter. 7-0 Nebraska over Texas Tech. When it is harvest time in Nebraska, sometimes you get corn. Sometimes you get 300-pound linemen. Rob Zadiska. Joel Wilkes. 14 games. He is the uh, junior member of this lineup. Aaron Graham, the center. Brendan Stye, the right guard, 23 games, and Zach Wiegert, the right tackle. He and Zadiska are the veterans in the group. In Ohio, we had a slogan, uh, knee high by the 4th of July. These guys are... <laughs> yeah. These guys are ceiling high by the 4th of July. And they have always had the great rushing offense. Frazier from his own two. Schlesinger, the fullback. Nothing. May have lost a half a yard. Second effort by Byron Wright, number 94, as he bounced off and Wright wrapped him up. Well, Spike Dykes is calling the defenses for Texas Tech. Of course, he's the head coach. When he lost Carlos Maynard to the pros, he decided to call the defenses himself. This is a 4-4 defense. It's an eight-man front. And sometimes an eight-man front can give an option team trouble. Two tight ends in there for Nebraska. They'd like some breathing room. Run the action with Frazier. Hit, escapes, gets up near the four. Once again, the guy that slowed him down was Zach Thomas. He was in on the play again. They're not blocking the backside linebacker, which leads me to believe, again, they'll come back with the counter play. Maybe not down here inside their own five-yard line. Nine people from Texas Tech are really close to the football, which means the play-action passes should be there for Tommy Frazier. When you're down here on offense, you don't really want to pitch the ball either, do you? Don't want to pitch the ball, but Nebraska lives and dies with the option. They will do it. They will throw out of here. Third and nine. Quarterback draw. Will not get the first down. Frazier wrapped up short of the 10-yard line. Zach Thomas, who is going to have a career tonight, was in on the stop again. Mike, as we said before, sometimes you can score too easily and you lose your focus a little bit. I'm sure Tom Osborne's concerned about that. Quarterback draw, but again, you were right. Zach Thomas, 35, he read it from the start of the play and was able to make the tackle. And the guy who couldn't block him was the All-American Zach Wiegert, the right tackle. Fourth down, they have to kick it out of the end zone. 
Erstad, who has a tremendous leg, averaging nearly 50 yards a punt, will kick to DeBuck and Johnson. And he crushes one. DeBuck all the way back to the 25. Has a seam. One more step, and he breaks it. But there is a flag down on the Nebraska side of the 50-yard line. John Vedrill downfield to make a tackle. That's usually where you have a block in the back or holding a 62-yard punt. And it will be a block in the back. Mike, that's why I like Nebraska, because they're complete as a football team. They've got good offense, good defense, and good special teams and good kickers. by the receiving team, 10 yards from the end of the run, first down. So Texas Tech doesn't get the kind of break it would want out of holding Nebraska inside the 10-yard line on defense. Instead, they'll take over at their own 26. But that has to be a big boost in confidence, being able to stop Nebraska on two consecutive possessions. as the quarterback. Hanspard is in as the tailback. This is the kid who can fly. Hanspard to the 39-yard line. When we mentioned he had a choice between Texas Tech and Notre Dame, his last two picks, one of the newspapers said, when was the last time someone chose Lubbock over South Bend? The answer is the first time it ever happened. Well, when he was recruited, he was recruited by everyone. He was leaning toward Texas A&M over Notre Dame and Oklahoma and Nebraska. He went, he called Texas Tech, asked him to come here for the visit. And are they happy? The fullback, Walker, gets absolutely nothing out of it. Mikey, had four of his players were being recruited from his high school, so he just wanted to come here. He visited. He felt comfortable. He went home, and he prayed over his decision. And one day, he was taking a shower, and it came to him that, Lord, he prayed, and the Lord said, go to Texas Tech. He felt inner peace from that moment on. A deeply religious young man who racked up some incredible numbers, over 4,000 yards the last two years in high school. Second and long, hands part on the draw again, waiting for him this time. And the defensive end, Dwayne Harris, gets him along with Ed Stewart, number 32. Speed defense, Mike, Nebraska. Seven of their 11 defensive starters are from east of the Mississippi River. Here, look at the seven defensive starters. From, they went for speed. At four years ago, they were beaten by Washington at Nebraska, and they lost the Fiesta Bowl to Florida State. And they decided at that point, we want to recruit speed. They went back east for the speed. It has made them a different defense. Third and eight for Tony Darden, the redshirt freshman. Chased out of the pocket again. Look at the pressure they put on. He throws. Could have been caught, but it's incomplete at the 45. Would have been a first down, and Malcolm McKenzie, number 17, couldn't come up with it. Nebraska is not allowing Tony Darden to get settled. They're, they're pressuring him. Going to start. You look at Nebraska. They're blitzing the linebackers. Putting pressure on. Number 55, Christian Peter. They never let him get settled. Never let his feet get settled. Ball should have been caught by Malcolm McKenzie, number 17. Certainly a catchable pass. So from the 41, they'll have to kick it away. And Cade, who has had a couple of good punts, will kick to Kareem Moss, who waits back at his 20. And we have 326 to go first quarter from Lubbock. Another good high floating kick. Moss, he was hit by his own man. The ball going down to the five. It'll be down to the two again. The reason there was no flag is his own man ran into it. A 57-yard punt. Leslie Dennis back trying to block for him. Looked like he ran into him. We'll be back to Lubbock in just a minute. Fans with something to cheer about so far. After giving up the early touchdown, they have played Nebraska tough and trail number one by only a touchdown. And now Nebraska has to start from its own two-yard line again. Play action by Frazier under pressure. 
gets out of it and forced out of bounds near the first down sticks. They had a shot at a safety and couldn't get him. They had a shot. Sean Banks, number 46, just missed the tackle, but Tommy Frazier makes you miss. Tommy Frazier with a play-action pass. Good call because Texas Tech's really crowding the football. There's number 46, Sean Banks just can't bring Tommy Frazier down. I expect more and more play-action passes, Mike, because of the crowd that they have inside. Second and short, Phillips lunges forward, has the first down out around the 12. Let's check in with Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, when Zach Thomas came to Texas Tech, uh, he, he was told by the coaches he had what they call pedestrian speed. What that means is, he said, if, if, son, if you try to cross the street, you're probably going to get hit by a car because you're just that slow. He said, since that time, I've been trying to work on my speed, and this past year, they clocked him in less than 4.7 in a 40-yard dash. So Zach has certainly improved in a couple years on his foot speed. Back upstairs. All right, Jerry, there are a lot of us who've had to live with that pedestrian speed for a long time. First and 10, Nebraska. That offensive line can just wear you down if you let him keep the ball. Frazier fakes the pitch, keeps it, then tripped up. Fine defensive play by Sean Hurd, the right corner. And they strung that out pretty well. That's the perfect way to play the option. You have to make Tommy Frazier guess on a decision. Watch how they string it out to the sideline and make Tommy Frazier not make a decision. Now slow play the option. Don't make a mistake and attack Tommy Frazier too soon. And Hurd came off a double team block to make that tackle. Frazier now 79 yards on five carries. Nebraska has taken a timeout with 2.14 to go in the quarter. Of course, you know that ESPN is your home for college football. Every Saturday begins at 11.30 in the morning Eastern with College Game Day. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James preview the entire day from South Bend. Then it's off to Evanston, Illinois, as number 25 Stanford goes against Northwestern in the Brain Bowl. Then at 3.30, the college football scoreboard will all the scores and highlights. And then CFA prime time, number 20, Tennessee against number 23, Georgia. At 10 o'clock, a Big East Pac-10 showdown, number 6, Miami against Arizona State. A lot of good football Saturday night. Yes, Looking sir. forward to the Tennessee-Georgia game. How do you stop Eric Zier? Of course, all the attention is on football after baseball has been able to give itself a frontal lobotomy. <laughs> Total yards so far, Nebraska dominating, as you might expect. They're only ahead 7 to nothing, and Texas Tech has played far better than those stats would indicate. Bill Humphrey, number 51, is in at center for Nebraska on second and five. Phillips has a hole. Brought down by an ankle tackle. Has a first down out at the 24-yard line. Bart Thomas, the safety, got him. Well, Bart Thomas is the brother of Zach Thomas, and he quit the football team two years ago because his wife had a baby. He went to Spike Dykes. He said, listen, I don't have much time. My wife's, we have a newborn baby. He said, listen, it's a no-brainer. You quit football, stay on scholarship, and uh, now this year he's back, and uh, both he is happy and his brother Zach happy that he returned. One, one more shot to play with his brother. Phillips. And they have found a seam in the middle of that Texas Tech defense. Phillips will get about seven more here. You know, in last year's game, Texas Tech really played Nebraska very well at Lincoln. There was 88 offensive plays by Nebraska. 51 of the plays, there was only a gain of three yards or less. So what hurts you when you play Nebraska is the big play, like Tommy Frazier showed us early in the first quarter. In that game, Texas Tech was actually leading late in the third quarter, 21 to 20, and then the roof fell in. Phillips now, eight carries, 30 yards. Schlesinger, he has the first down out at the 35, and you saw Texas Tech defenders flying all over the place going for Frazier and Phillips, but Schlesinger had the football. They're pounding Texas Tech inside. They got a real big weight advantage with their offensive line. First down is an excellent down for Tommy Frazier to play action pass. Across the front, 315, 280, 280, 300, and 300. Not just big, they're good. Nebraska now has 116 yards rushing first quarter. 
Frazier looking to throw in the flat. Has the completion ball got away from the first tackler, finally forced out of bounds. The reason first down is a good passing down for Nebraska and Tommy Frazier is that they're bunching up so much inside to stop the inside running game and the option that you definitely have one on one on the outside. Cat Adams, number 22, just can't bring down Reggie Ball, number seven. Perfect down to throw if you're Nebraska, first down. As Spike Dykes likes to say, our defensive back's a little bitty thing. A little bitty fleas. Just hold on till somebody else can come and help. First down at the 49 for the Huskers. Frazier straight back to throw. Plenty of time. Throwing Holbein. Nearly intercepted, and it could have been a flag. Great defense by Sean Hurd, who had inside position, and Holbein actually came over his back to knock it down. Well, you teach your receivers, sometimes you have to become the defender when the ball is thrown poorly, and this ball was thrown poorly. Brendan Holbein had to go over the back of Sean Hurd to make sure it wasn't an interception. Here's the pass by Tommy Frazier. Again on first down, they're throwing the football. To see the receiver, Brendan Holbein, become a defender and knock the ball away. Second and 10. Phillips on the counter. Got a couple of good blocks. Zach Thomas got a hand on him, but he's still gonna get the first down. They'll mark it at the 38-yard line of Texas Tech. Robert Johnson made the stop. Crushing block by Rob Zadiska, number 56, 6'5", 315. A Rhodes Scholar candidate. Left tackle, number 56. There's the block on Marcus Coleman, number 12. First and 10, Nebraska on a sustained drive. Finally, the pitch to Phillips. And that time, Robert Johnson, the linebacker, ended up covering both. You can't cover both. No, you, you can't, and you can't get square to the... He, he got his shoulders turned to the sideline, and you're lost both ways there. You can't play the quarterback, and you certainly can't play the pitch. You're in a lot of trouble, number 22, Cat Adams. That is the end of the first quarter. Nebraska's offense has lived up to its press clippings. They've been moving the ball, but lead only 7-0. Second and three from the Texas Tech 32-yard line as we start the second quarter in Lubbock. Phillips into the center of the line, close to a first down. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Doctor? Michael, you alluded to the fact that Rob Zadiska could be a Rhodes Scholar this year. In fact, he's already graduated from Nebraska with a perfect 4-0 grade point average in biological sciences. What he wants to do is go to Oxford this summer on a Rhodes Scholarship and study. Eventually, he wants to attend medical school and become a neurosurgeon. There goes the stereotype for the big, dumb offensive lineman, guys. Well, he may also be playing on Sunday. He can knock their brains out on Sunday and then <laughs> fix them on Monday. He's operating right now. <laughs> Third and very short for Nebraska. Phillips. Second effort looks like it got him the first down. Sean Banks got the initial hit on him. But Phillips at six feet 200 leaned in. Rob Zadiska, number 56, running right behind him in the block by the fullback, Corey Schlesinger, number 40. Well, nice job by, by Banks to submarine the whole thing. But it will be a first down. Crowd hoping that Texas Tech can step in here. Little counter play. Under pressure. Out to Phillips and overthrow him. Great idea by Frazier. He knew exactly where Phillips was, but then turned and really gunned it toward him. Good pressure by Zach Thomas again, number 35, linebacker, who really is having a good first half here. Tommy Frazier with a little quick roll out to the right. Going to try to hit Lawrence Phillips back almost a lateral, close to a lateral, but Again, a little bit in front of Lawrence Phillips, just a little bit too high. So it's second and 10, 13.47 to go, second quarter. 
Holbein and Ball, the wide receivers. Muhammad, the wing back, goes into the slot. And Frazier to the shotgun. Here comes the late blitz to Phillips. Screen on the right side. Phillips to the 20. 10. To the three-yard line. Gain of 25. Mike, I, I keep being impressed when I coached against him, but when I watch him even more so, the offensive line. Milt Tenenbaum, the offensive line coach. Zach Wiegert is six foot five, 300 and 310 pounds, number 72. But watch the agility. He's able to come out. You're not. We're going to get maybe get to see him make this block in front of Lawrence Phillips, number one. There's the block, but they have such good mobility, not just 300 pounds, but they run so well. They do a lot of work jumping rope in the offseason. First and goal. Eating up nearly five minutes on this drive, and now Texas Tech signaling for a timeout. Didn't like what they saw out of the Nebraska offensive formation. We'll be back to Lubbock in just a moment. The Texas Tech three, Damon Benning, the new eye back. He's number 21. Frazier on the option. Cuts it back. Touchdown. And once again, Robert Johnson was in no man's land. He had to cover the quarterback and the pitch man. Gets his shoulders turned to the sideline again, but Tommy Frazier, what a quick move after he makes a decision. Good block by the fullback. When you play against Nebraska, the fullback really is a key player that you have to key on. Corey Schlesinger, good block on Zach Thomas, number 35. Sealer for the point after. Robert Johnson, what number is he? Robert Johnson. He's got it, and that was a deflating. 98-yard, 15-play drive. Frazier now, two touchdowns, six carries, 82 yards. 53 yards passing on four out of seven. Has 135 yards in total offense. Number 40, Corey Schlesinger, the fullback, will look for the linebacker. There's the pickup. Now you see how number seven, Robert Johnson, gets his shoulders turned. Tommy Frazier looked at the situation, tucks it up for his second touchdown. Here's the move, fakes the pitch, right up the football field. Here are the numbers on Frazier, and it's an outstanding first half for the Heisman candidate. Now, normally, option quarterbacks are not the glamour-type guys in the Heisman voting. This guy's more than an option quarterback. He, his improved passing will help him. Plus, he's on a team that will be number one until they're defeated this year. As you look at Spike Dykes, who's trying to figure a way to stop him. But I like Tommy Frazier's chances because he's going to have the football in his hands a majority of the time. I think it has to happen. He has to stay healthy. When you're an option quarterback, you take some hits, and you're a play away from going to the second-team quarterback. Herstad to, catch to uh, kick to Mitchell and to Buck, who wait at the two-yard line. 14-0 Nebraska, 13-13 to go first half. Herstad kicked the last one out of the end zone and kicks this one back to the back line. So Texas Tech will start from the 20-yard line. Hope you'll be with us on this Sunday, NFL game day and prime time. Game day starts at noon Eastern. Chris Berman, Joe Theismann, Tom Jackson, Chris Mortensen, and Phil Sims are going to have to get some more chairs. They provide the most comprehensive pregame show in the NFL. Then at 7, Chris and Tom back with prime time. You'll see highlights and analysis of all the day's games. And there were some beauties last weekend. We expect some more this Sunday. The NFL did a great job with some rule changes, and it's really resulted in tremendous offensive productivity. Darden with the toss, hands full, no place to go. You try to get outside on Nebraska, you're taking your life in your own hands. They just run too well. Tyrone Williams, a corner. You know, when you look at this Nebraska defense, you take Ed Stewart, who's an inside linebacker, and Troy Dumas, number four. They're not very big. Stewart is 6'1", 215. You look at Tyrone Williams, 6'1", 185. Troy Dumas is inside at 220. Defensive backs playing linebackers. Again, speed, speed, speed on this football team. Texas Tech has 21 yards rushing in the first half. Play action by Darden has time. Scoble! And he dropped the ball or is it down? 
They're going to the officials the consulting. They're saying it's down. Complete pass to Nebraska 37. Field Scoble beat Tyrone Williams. Came right back with a pass against Tyrone Williams. And he's saying it was incomplete that he hit, hit the ground. The ball came out, but it's going to be a completion for Field Scoble. Good pass by Tony Darden. He needed this. He needed something to settle him down. The redshirt freshman quarterback. Let's see if it's a catch, Mike. Nope. Oh, that's one that uh, he didn't get it, but it's in the books. Well, that's not even close. From this angle, it looked like he had it, but from the reverse angle, never caught the ball at all. A break for Texas Tech. Darden trying to take advantage. Quarterback keeper. Hammered as he got to the 35, a gain of about two. Ed Stewart in there to nail him. When Ed Stewart uh, arrived at Nebraska, he was a defensive back, and Kevin Steele, the linebacker coach, said, we're going to move you to linebacker. He quit. He said, I'm not going to be a linebacker. I came here to be a defensive back. About a week went by, and they talked to him. They said, listen, you don't understand. Our linebackers are defensive backs, and now you're looking at one of the better linebackers in college football. They talked him into coming back. Hans Spart is out. Only Crane is in at tailback for Texas Tech. And Crane will get the carry. Stewart, the first man to hit him, and got some help from Dante Jones, the right defensive end. Mike, you go back to a team like Miami that put defensive backs at linebacker, linebackers on the line to get all that speed, and that's been the evolution of the Nebraska defense. It has been the trend. Florida State, you're right, Miami, University of Washington under Don James went to real quick defenses. You're going to see Ed Stewart, number 32. You can't block him. He's only 215, but he avoids blocks very well. Third and five, Nebraska showing blitz. Darden may be changing the play. Here they come. Darden unloads, sideline, out of bounds. Excellent catch by Sheldon Bass, but he did not come down in bounds. Good pressure by Dante Jones, number 84. You have to throw fast against Nebraska because of the rush. They're showing blitz. Now, sometimes they'll bail out, but here they come. Dante Jones, number 84, with the first pressure on Tony Darden. You know what's happened for Texas Tech? They've got Zebby Lethridge, the other quarterback, sitting on the sideline, so he should be watching what's happening right now, looking forward to his turn in the ball game as a quarterback. John Davis will try the field goal from 49. He has three over 50 in his career. He got it. A big, big play for Texas Tech to get them on the scoreboard. Otherwise, they turn the ball over to Nebraska outside the 30. Davis comes through with a big field goal. He is four for four this season. 14-3 Huskers. Get it moving. Bullet has the taste to keep it moving. Coors Light. Naturally brewed for a taste that goes down easy. Coors Light. Keep on moving. Taking a look at the weather, we've got a high pressure, high pressure system. I'm sitting right here. And that is bringing us nothing but beautiful clear skies and old Mr. Sunshine. Is it just us, or are weathermen really only guessing? But hold on. It's going to get better. Isabel. Not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> Soaring. Try. That's why we make the Isuzu Trooper. Because life's an adventure. Be prepared. My prediction, it's going to rain. Trust me. Isuzu, practically amazing. It's the same thing every Saturday. He puts on those old blue jeans and goes out with that old dog. And he's gone all day. He says he's going to bring back dinner, but all he ever brings back is that old dog. Here's to old dogs, Saturday mornings, and comfortable blue jeans. Wrangler. Saturday, the rushing arsenal of Tennessee's volunteers take on the Georgia Bulldogs at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Texas Tech on the scoreboard. They're trailing 14-3 as we are about to have sunset here in Lubbock, Texas.
Rodgers to kick off. Benning out of the end zone. Big hole. Benning midfield. Cut from behind at the 42. A 58-yard kickoff return for Damon Benning. Marcus Coleman saved the touchdown. You don't like that if you're Spike Dykes or a Texas Tech fan because you want to make Nebraska go the length of the field, not give them a short field. Damon Benning, number 29, 21, just hits the scene, but watch number 12, Coleman, Marcus Coleman, catch up to him and stop the touchdown. He got a block from Clinton Childs that just pancaked somebody. Benning will stay in as the eye back and get the ball something you don't see very often. The guy brings back a kickoff 58 yards and then gets the ball in the first play from scrimmage. Well, they believe, Nebraska believes, they'd like to snap the ball with 15 seconds to go on the clock, and they want to try to get to 90-some plays against you. They just want to grind you up so in the fourth quarter you have nothing left. And usually, you have <laughs> nothing left. And a lot of times it's before the fourth quarter. After the national anthem sometimes. <laughs> Nine minutes, 58 seconds to go, first half. Makovica is in as the fullback. And now Frazier can't get his people set. He was trying to get Eric Alford, number 88, the tight end to switch sides, and has to burn a timeout on second and seven. Timeout. We'll be back to Lubbock in a moment. Temperatures fall. Labatt ice beer is created. The ice is separated from the beer for a uniquely rich, uniquely smooth beer. Incredibly smooth beer begins here. Only from Canada. Labatt ice beer. Real smooth taste. Did you know that for over 30 years, Ray Whitfield and Alan Ford have had a vehicle for every need and a finance plan for every budget? They have AX and Z plans, red carpet leases, programs for first-time buyers and college grads, cash incentives, and a super selection. You owe it to yourself to check out our doggone good deals. Here, dog. Come on, dog. Me and dog want you to go to Telegraph Road right now. Get a good deal. Alan Ford, Telegraph North of Square Lake Road. Ray Whitfield Ford, Telegraph of Sports News. Uh, and now we turn to hunting and gathering. Equus Ludi. The battle between good and evil continued last night. In bear baiting today. In fox hunting. At rodeo last night. Today is baseball scores. In the World Football League. Sports Night. What's next in sports news? College Football Edition, Saturdays at 4 on ESPN2. Let's get out! Let's get out! Let's go! Nebraska with a second and seven from the Texas Tech 39-yard line. Makovica and Benning. The running backs behind Frazier. Frazier to Benning on the toss. Frazier run out of bounds by Johnson, but not before he got to the 30 and then flags down at the end of the play. Could have been a late hit. The last thing Texas Tech needed was a penalty at the end of the run. And it was a face mask instead. Spike Dykes talked about the other day, he said we went to a 4-3 defense. Face mask on the defense, five yards. Added on to the end of the run, first down. When I first came here, he said, but Houston ran us out of it. He said, I still have nightmares of that Houston <laughs> run and shoot. And he said, there was a lot of people, coaches, that had parties and pep rallies when John Jenkins left Houston. He said, I have a lot of respect for John Jenkins, but he forced us out of the 4-3. Now we're in a 4-4 defense. First down, Nebraska spotted the Texas Tech 24. Benning is the single setback. Two tight ends and two wideouts. Somebody moved early, and now they'll whistle the play dead. Looked like a couple of linemen and Benning got off early. All right, Gene, let's get it back now. Both scores 
on the offense. Five yards, repeat the down. Milt Tenefer, the offensive line coach for Nebraska, says that his two right side linemen, Brendan Stein and Zach Wieger, are the best pair they've ever had in Nebraska. That's saying a mouthful. Yeah, it's not like they haven't had some All Americans out on the long party cap. It's Benning gets a couple of yards, and Frazier was dumped by Damon Wickware, who shot the gap and went right after the quarterback, and then Zach Thomas makes the tackle downfield. They have worked the right side. A lot of that 84 yards on the outside was the option run by Frazier in the first quarter where he picked up something like 57 yards for the touchdown. But outside, they have been very successful, as you would expect on the option. But most of the yardage, 120 total against 34 coming off the right side behind the two horses and the average yards per play so far. Backfield and dump right from the right defensive end. Does it again. He's had a couple of big plays. Texas Tech really doesn't have much size inside, and that's why they're running the 4-4 defense. They don't feel like they can recruit the big defensive linemen. So you take a guy like Byron Wright, number 94, who's 6'4, 245, anchor him down and hope you get some play out of him. Third and eleven. Here comes the blitz. Frazier unloads in time, and it's dropped by Benning. He was wide open. He could have gone 15 yards before someone got within hailing distance. So you talk about a great play call versus a blitz. They were able to fake Tommy Frazier with a quick fake to Damon Benning, number 21. Sean Banks, number 46, with a blitz. But see Benning come out. There's no one has him man-to-man. -man. He's wide open on the blitz. That's what Tommy Frazier said. We dropped a lot of footballs against West Virginia. We've got to start catching the football. And that was a catchable ball if Benning doesn't keep going the direction he was. All he had to do was turn around a little bit. Erstad will try the long field goal. 42 yards. He has an incredible leg. But it's wide left. He was kicking 60 yarders with ease in practice last night. So Texas Tech holds a gift of the drop pass, sets up the long field goal attempt. Texas Tech will take over the football when we come back. stay here. Mike, I'll tell you what, I'm impressed with Spike Dykes and what he's accomplishing here with this football team. This is a young team, and they have Nebraska this week and Oklahoma next week. So, I mean, they're a real critical part of the schedule for a young football team. But I'll tell you, I believe, after watching them practice in the, just the first half here tonight, they will be in the thick of things in the Southwest Conference with a chance to win that conference. They're going to grow as they go on this season. With Nebraska, Oklahoma back-to-back, -back, you know Spike isn't drawing up the schedules. No. The athletic director, and I think they have a new athletic director now. <laughs> Zebby Lethridge, the other redshirt freshman quarterback, has just checked into the ball game. He threw very well in his opener a week ago. 16 out of 22 were his numbers. Crane gets the handoff on the first play, got maybe a half a yard. Swarmed by the Nebraska defense, led by Jared Tomich. Number 93. Zebby told me the other day at practice, he said, when we're on the sideline, we focus on what we're going to do when we go in the ballgame. He said, no one really cares who starts. We know we're both going to play. Zebby is from here in Lubbock, so there was a big roar of the crowd when he came on the football field. Is it a bonus for him to be on the sideline early to see what Nebraska's doing? Very important for a young quarterback to see and stand with the coach. He knows what he's watched the first quarter. Now he should be able to be able to operate. Quarterback draw. Lethridge, first down. To the 38-yard line, Tyrone Williams had to stop it. They have to find a way to stop the rush in Nebraska. They haven't been able to control it. They're not running the football very well, so a quarterback draw is a good call. Zebby Lethridge with the draw. Nice block. He picked up a nice block by number 65, Casey Jones, the old railroad engineer. If there is a weakness to Nebraska, it is a suspect secondary. So if they can throw against them, they've had a couple of guys open. But Mike, you're right. You have to have the time to do it. Has 
time. Throws sideline and DeBuck with some contact back there with Baron Miles, who was with him step for step. Troy, excuse Dumas. me, it was Dumas. Troy Dumas, a linebacker, step for step with Matt DeBuck, number 24, the wide receiver. And again, that shows you a little bit about the Nebraska defense. Here's a linebacker running step for step uh, with a wide receiver for Texas Tech. He's another Butkus candidate on the uh, preseason list of 48. Played as a freshman. He is not redshirted. A senior now, one of only two players on the roster at Nebraska that doesn't redshirt. When you don't redshirt at Nebraska, you're something else. Talking to Gil Branch in the day, formerly the Cowboys, that's what he said. You play as a freshman for Nebraska, you've got to be good. Second and 10, Alton Crane gets maybe a yard. Phil Ellis, number 41, back up inside linebacker, was in on the tackle. It's a tough situation for a young quarterback to constantly be in third downs against this Nebraska defense because they can pin their ear back, ears back and come after you with blitzes and quick speed of the outside rush. They had eight sacks in the opening game. And they're up to show blitz again. They back out of it. Lethridge with time. Throws and it's picked up. Intercepted by Tony Velan, the former quarterback. Still on his feet down the sideline. The pass was just overthrown, and it didn't look like the receiver ever saw the ball, but Velan did, and a 34-yard return off the pick. That's why you don't want a young quarterback to be in third and nine against this Nebraska defense. He threw right into double coverage. Tony Velan's a safety, number nine. He's sitting back. Watch number nine, middle of the football field. He sits back as soon as Zebby goes to throw the football. Look at the double team. Troy Dumas is running stride for stride with Stacy Mitchell, and then Tony Velan over the top. So a good call defensively for Nebraska. So Nebraska takes over at the 34-yard line. Childs is the new eye back. And he'll get it on the toss. Robinson out there waiting for him along with Thomas. And now Zebby Lethridge getting the word from the sideline on what he did on that play. That's Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator. He said, by the time this game's over, our pups will grow beards. <laughs> Two freshman quarterbacks getting an education tonight on the job experience. You do hear some colorful language down here, don't oh, you? Oh, Texas Tech, they're the greatest. Spike Dykes is the most fun to talk to of anybody I've ever been around. Players love him. Love this coaching staff. Good, sound football coaches. A lot of high school coaches on the staff. Excellent coaches. Second and eight. Frazier looking to throw under pressure. Throws incomplete. Muhammad couldn't scoop it off the ground. And Frazier really took a shot from Sean Banks. He got That's hit about low. the third time he got him. He got hit low, Mike. Sean Banks came in really just submarined inside on the blitz and... That's the one player on this football team in Nebraska they cannot afford to get hurt. 46, Sean Banks just comes right through and hit Tommy Frazier as he was up in the air a little bit. There's the backup, Brooke Berenger, number 18. Third and eight for Nebraska. Here comes the blitz. Frazier, flanker, screen, knocked away. Excellent play, Sean Hurd. Sean Hurd read that play all the way, reached in and knocked it down. Tommy Frazier wants interference, but you talk about a well-played defensive play by Texas Tech. Give Spike Dyke some credit. They stopped, they had a double screen on. They were going to try to flare the football to the tailback. He wasn't open. They came back to the alternate receiver, Reggie Ball on a screen, and them both covered. Number seven, he is covered very well by Texas Tech. Excellent play by Sean Hurd. Was able to get his arm around. So they'll go for the long field goal again, this time from 49 yards from Darren Erstad, who missed his first long attempt. Plenty long, but wide. And it's going to be wide again. That one goes sailing into the stands. It would have been good from 60, but he's been wide left twice. So Texas Tech holds again. And when you're on the road, you don't like to leave the home team stay around for a while. Tom Osborne, his team has lost some scoring opportunities here. 
could have easily been 20 to 3 by now, although 49 yard field goals are hardly chip shots. The 606, Spike Dykes would even like to get in with this score. It, it's a win for his young football team. Hands barred in a tailback. And he'll get the carry. Hands barred can't get outside. There's the quickness of Nebraska, Dante Jones. Hansbard, by the way, is the prize of the best recruiting class the Spike Dykes had ever had. He signed some real blue chippers this year. He said it's the first year we signed 25 players, and we really believe all 25 are going to play for us. Dante Jones, number 84, slices in, is able to make the play on Byron Hansbard before he can get started. Hansbard out, Crane is in on second and 12. Zebby Leftridge with time over the middle, incomplete. And the Texas Tech receivers have to do a better job at hanging on to the ball. DeBuck simply couldn't come up with it. Again, it looked like a catchable pass. Mike, you're in third and 12 again, and that's what you can't put a young freshman quarterback in that type of situation. The last time a third down situation, he threw a poor pass for an interception. And really, the only completion of any note that they had on instant replay, you could see it wasn't a completion at all, missed call by the officials. They have hit only one for eight except for that controversial 43 yard four man rush third and 12 they throw in the flat that won't get it done stacy mitchell makes the catch but he's wrapped up immediately by clint brown the outside linebacker it's a better decision that time by zebby lethridge because now you punt the football and play to your defense again dick winder the offensive coordinator trip set Stacy Mitchell, number six, the inside receiver. Clint Brown, number 45, a linebacker, 6'1", 215. Again, another small linebacker that can run for the Nebraska defense. And when you can cover wide receivers with linebackers, you can do just about anything you want. Kareem Moss, deep to receive the punt from Brad Cade. 4.46 to go first half. Still only 14-3 Nebraska. Cade, another pretty punt. Moss from the 24, nothing. Excellent coverage by Texas Tech. A 41-yard punt, no return. Hope you'll join us for College Game Day this Saturday, and it all comes from South Bend, Indiana. Starts at 11.30 in the morning, and then we'll be off to Evanston, Illinois, as Stanford takes on Northwestern. At 3.30, the college football scoreboard with all the scores and highlights. Chris Fowler will be there to bring you everything. Beautiful night for football here in Lubbock, Texas. Phillips and Schlesinger, the number one backfield tandem back in. Phillips. Zach Thomas missed him. Scoops around another tackle. And Phillips with Frazier in front of him. To the 50, to the 48-yard line of Texas Tech. Had a shot at him in the backfield twice, and he gets away. He was able to cut back, and he did pick up a little bit of a block from Tommy Frazier, number 15. Running backs always like to see that. Quarterback will give a little for you. Here's the counter play. It's not there. Too much penetration by Texas Tech. Now, pick up number 15. There's a little block. He's on Cat Adams, number 22. Tommy Frazier, number 15, throwing a little block through a little bit too soon. Clinton Childs checks in at the Ibex spot. Frazier, plenty of time. And throws it poorly, incomplete at the 30-yard line. I guess we finally saw something Tommy Frazier can't do. He's not a great downfield blocker. That wasn't bad, though. I mean, that's still... <laughs> the I've effort was there. I've seen worse quarterbacks. Let me tell you, <laughs> he, he did make an effort. You know, Mike, in Nebraska's offense, their coaches keep track of how many times they knock down a play, opposing players. And, of course, the receivers take a lot of pride in that. But they try to knock down at least 100 opposing players during a ball game. They had 110 versus West Virginia. They Incredible. grade on that. That's something that means a lot to their football team. Second and ten. Childs wedges his way for about three to the Texas Tech 45-yard line. This would be a big defensive stand for the Red Raiders if they can hold Nebraska here. Cornhuskers with 192 yards rushing in the first half. And only 14 points. It's a key for the Texas Tech defense. The one play the Tech defense has had problems with is the option play. 
He may look for Nebraska to run the option with Tommy Frazier. He's already gotten two touchdowns tonight. Here he is. They defense it very well, but Frazier gets away from another tackle and dives. Gets within a yard of the first down, and Nebraska may come out and go for this. Well, I, I think you can bet that, but they're, they're going for this first down. After misfiring on a couple of field goals, they're not going to punt this football. They're going to go for the first down. And that's as much a statement about your offense as it is about your defense. But he believes in his defense. He knows he's letting Texas Tech stay around here with 254. He knows his defense can play. He's going to go for this first down. They've stopped him once in a situation like this. Zach Thomas made a huge tackle on that play. Two tight ends. Fourth and a yard. Option. Frazier cuts it up. Dives forward and should have the first down by about a half yard. William Ritter, number 99, made the tackle, but not in time. Two options in a row. They've had success running the option. Texas Tech has stopped the option, but sometimes it, you know, that it's going to break for you. But I, I believe again now Texas Tech will have to defend the play action pass on first down. I wouldn't be surprised next time if they have a fourth and short that they throw off of it because they're committing everybody to the run. You see Zach Thomas, and he's going to be blocked again by Corey Schlesinger, number 40. Key block. I look for a pass here on first down play action. From the Tech 37. Phillips. Coleman up from the safety spot to get him. He plays the Raider back combination of a safety and linebacker as they play that 4-4. Well, you're committing so many people to the run, it's very difficult to run against Texas Tech inside because of the stack eight people. Marcus Coleman, who's six foot two, 202 pounds of junior, really made a good play on that, that uh, play there against Nebraska. Two-time Southwest Conference Player of the Week a year ago. He's an excellent secondary guy. Mike Dyke said he can play for anybody in the country. He's got a couple of those guys. Play action. Frazier in trouble. He's sacked. Number 86, Tony Daniels, the backup defensive end, came through and got it. What Nebraska was going to try to do was fake the ball up inside, then roll Tommy Frazier. Use the receiver. You're going to see the receiver try to come back and block number 86, Tony Daniels, and then roll out Tommy Frazier. But they couldn't get around Tony Daniels, number 86. This will roll out all the way. But Tony Daniels never gave Abdul Muhammad, number 27, a chance to block him. So now it's third and 18, and Daniels getting congratulations on the sideline. Will they come with a blitz? They have tried on third and long situations before. Four-man rush. Batted up in the air. Almost picked off by William Ritter, number 99. Damon Whitware, 91, got the block. Damon Whitware, he came to Texas Tech as a free safety, wore number 13. And when he got here, he was 200 pounds. They moved him to strong safety. Next year, he was 210. Spike said, maybe you should be a linebacker. The following year, he came here at 235. He said, son, you're going to play the inside linebacker. Then he went to 250. He said, learn how to play on all fours and give me that number 13. You're going to be number 91. <laughs> you're playing down. And now he's up to 279, so they moved him from defensive end to defensive tackle. The Buck and Johnson will now go back for Erstad's punt and a huge defensive stand for Tech. Short kick. No fair catch taken, and he's buried. Dave Johnson, and a flag goes down. Let's see if he made the fair catch signal. I don't or think if they, they didn't give him room. I think that's what they're going to call. I don't think they gave him enough room. In college football, you have to give the receiver six feet. If you violate the zone, it's a penalty. That's what it is. Non-contact, interference with opportunity for fair catch, five yards, first down. Just not enough room, Dave Johnson. Kareem Moss, number 29. 
think I'd just run this football and take it to the house. There's only 32 seconds to go in the half. And that's exactly what they do. Give it to Alton Crane. He doesn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Wrapped up by middle linebacker Doug Coleman. Coming up at halftime, we'll go back to the studio. Join Chris Fowler for the Discus Athletic Halftime Report. We'll have our halftime blitz with all of our commentators going around the country. And an interview with Tennessee quarterback Jerry Colquitt, who suffered that such a depressing injury on the seventh play when he had a chance to finally start for Tennessee. Mike, what a good young man. He waited five years for that opportunity. Good team player for Tennessee. The Texas Tech fans come to their feet as we've reached the end of the first half. Nebraska 14-3. Chris Fowler is next right after this. See Tommy Frazier on the option, but watch the free safety, Bart Thomas, his brother, the linebacker, Zach Thomas. They have the quarterback on this particular play. The block by number 40, Corey Schlesinger wipes them both out. Now when Tommy Frazier gets to the corner with good blocking, there's no inside force to take the quarterback, thus touchdown. Maybe the key to this game so far, in the second quarter, Nebraska was in Texas Tech territory four times. They got only seven points out of it. That's why it's still close. This Texas Tech team, I talked about Syracuse the other night in their game against Oklahoma, that they would grow from that game. You're seeing a Texas Tech team that's going to become a good football team as the season goes on. The Buck 24. And See Tommy Frazier on the option, but watch the free safety, Bart Thomas, his brother, the linebacker, Zach Thomas, they have the quarterback on this particular play. The block by number 40, Corey Schlesinger wipes them both out. Now when Tommy Frazier gets to the corner with good blocking, there's no inside force to take the quarterback, thus touchdown. Maybe the key to this game so far, in the second quarter, Nebraska was in Texas Tech territory four times. They got only seven points out of it. That's why it's still close. This Texas Tech team, I talked about Syracuse the other night in their game against Oklahoma, that they would grow from that game. You're seeing a Texas Tech team that's going to become a good football team as the season goes on. DeBuck 24 and Mitchell number six waiting the kick of Darren Erstad. His first two kicks have been unreturnable. And so is this, three yards deep in the end zone. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doctor, what do you have? Guys, at halftime, Texas Tech head coach Spike Dyke threw a very spirited presentation to his troops in the locker room. He said, hey, guys, remember last week we were down by 17 points in the first half. We came out in the third quarter, a totally different football team. Offensively, we've got to establish a drive. We've got to catch the ball. We're getting time to throw the ball. we just got to catch it, and we've got to keep our defense off the field. In Nebraska's locker room, Tom Osborne said, guys, we cannot get complacent. Offensively, we got very complacent in the second quarter. And defensively, we've got to guard against the deep ball. Back up there. Thank you, Jerry. Sebi Lethridge starting the second half. Scrambling out of the pocket. Gets a block. Lethridge out of bounds at the 39. He looks a little quicker than Darden. Got a good block from Todd Walker, the fullback. But, Mike, I'll tell you two things that are against Texas Tech right now. First of all, the short week. They played New Mexico on Saturday. Right. Uh, uh, Nebraska's had a long layoff since the West Virginia game. And the second thing is you're looking at a veteran coaching staff in Nebraska that will make the key adjustments. And you're a young football team. Zebby Lethridge with a good play. But the fourth, fourth quarter should be all Nebraska's with the short week and the way they pound you. That was only the fifth first down for Texas Tech in this ballgame. This could be number six, Field Scoble to midfield. First half stats, as you might expect, Nebraska dominated. The rush yards and the time of possession jump out at you as Texas Tech only able to rush for 38 yards, but right now they're on the move. Well, the one statistic that jumps out at me is two for nine for Texas Tech throwing the ball for only 49 yards. You must throw the football to beat Nebraska. And they had some catchable balls. Penalties not much of a factor, only one turnover in the ballgame. Nebraska has missed both of its long field goal drives. Lethridge deep down the middle, nobody home. Scoble was running a sideline pattern. Coming down the middle was Bo Adams, but it was 15 yards overthrown of both. It's, it's interesting because at the end of the third quarter in the West Virginia game, West Virginia was 0 for 9 in third down conversions. Texas Tech was 0 for 6 in the first half. 0 for 0 for. 
no one is completing anything on third down to keep the sticks moving against them. So far, it's 0 for September. Crane and Walker are the backs. Leverage under pressure. Going to have to run again. They got a good block again from the old railroad engineer, Casey Jones. Number 65 with a key block for Sebi Lethridge. Dante Jones, number 84, is coming on a good, hard rush. Good block by Ben Coffin, number 75. Casey Jones going to pick up Ed Stewart with a block. Sebi Lethridge in the secondary. Lethridge, three carries, 47 yards. And the fans are into it here at Jones Stadium and love it. Crane, no place to go. Tries to cut it outside. Up from the secondary, Mike Minter wrapped him up along with Dante Jones. Got a lot of help. Crane, nine carries, only 19 yards. That's a play that Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, is just saying, I'm just trying to slow the rush down. And no, I'm not going to get many yards, but I'm going to try to slow the rush, rush down on Nebraska. The one thing that helps on that quarterback draw is the defensive ends are coming in so wide, they actually take themselves out of the play. Jones gets him after a gain of one. And again, nothing outside has worked at all. And again, it's third down and long yardage for the young quarterback, Zebby Lethridge. So this is where Nebraska wanted to put the Texas Tech quarterbacks in this type of situation. I tell you what, his two biggest plays were scrambles. I'd call it this time. <laughs> it doesn't work usually when you go. That's call right. I'd send it in anyway. Yeah. throwing. Contact at the goal line interference. Tyrone Williams bumped into Sheldon Bass. And I want to see this on replay because I think Sheldon Bass just earned himself one on this. Well, Acting 101. Well, Tyrone Williams is thinking, hey, they caught one pass and it was an incompletion. He gave it to him. And I don't think I committed pass interference on this play. Let's see. Yeah, he's got his left arm in there some way, so it could have been could have been a good call. Sheldon sure Bass. wasn't much. Not much. But the kind of break that Texas Tech really needed and Sheldon Bass celebrating like he just caught a touchdown pass. Well, this is such a young football team. You're looking at a redshirt freshman throwing to a freshman and Sheldon Bass. So they one of the players for the older players from Texas Tech told me the freshmen don't know who Nebraska is, so they really aren't nervous. This drive has already consumed 47 yards. This is a good young football team. Crane. There was some room there for a second, but Mike Minter came up and nearly took his head off. They closed so fast. Well, I'll tell you, this team can contend for the Southwest Conference. Move 71 e Dick Winder, quarterback coach. Mike Minter, number 10, so tight inside is a safety. When you run against Nebraska, if you run to the strong safety, they usually have the strong safety on the weak side. If you run weak, you got an eight-man front. If you run to the right side, you pick up the free safety. They have nine people to run against. And now Texas Tech is going to have to use a timeout on second and eight, 12.42 to go third quarter. Number one leads by 11, but they're being threatened. Texas Tech fired up. They're at the Nebraska 12-yard line, second and eight down, 14-3. The defense digging in, and if a team ever needed a touchdown, it's right here for Texas Tech. You can see the confidence growing not only in the redshirt freshman quarterback but in the receivers. I think it helped Zebby Lethridge that he sat on the bench for most of the first quarter. He was able to see the Nebraska defense, so he's a little bit smarter going on the football field. It's third and two, Mike. Oh, absolutely. You're absolutely right. I call it a first down. It is not. Scoble, three catches, 65 yards. Tech has not converted the third down in this game. Touchdown! Got to hand it to 
Spike Dykes. Ayler gets his first catch in two games, and Spike says, we're going for two, fellas. Well, he wants to get within three points, and Zebby Lethridge has a lot of confidence at that quarterback position. Did you see him go over and hug Dick Windner? That's coaching, folks. That's when you really feel good. You got a red shirt freshman quarterback, and he's playing like a junior or senior, and it's just a great feeling to see him perform. And now Nebraska has taken a timeout to set up their defense. Well, we talked about naked between you and I and naked play, and I said it's a hit and miss because of the speed of the outside, but they took advantage of the speed of the defense. Dante Jones was inside. Zebby Lethridge with the wide open pass to Scott Myler. There's Zebby's outside. He could have ran for a little bit of yards, but he wanted the touchdown off of the naked. Dick Winder, the offensive coordinator, just like you drew it up, Dick. And here's a good feeling when the quarterback comes over, you give him a little hug and get back in there and get the two-point play now. <laughs> yeah, get the points, come back, and I'll hug you again. Get a two-point. That's right. Texas Tech had five first downs on that drive. They had four first downs the entire first half. Mike, I like the staff at Texas Tech. I think it's, a, it's an excellent teaching staff, and they're going against the staff over there in Nebraska. There's a lot of experience, but they're doing a nice job of adjusting. An 80-yard drive for Texas Tech to start the second half. The numbers on Lethridge. As they go for two. Fumble to snap from center, and he's buried. So Texas Tech can't convert to two points. But they have closed to within five and made it very, very interesting. 12.33 to go third quarter. Heavily favored Nebraska leads 14-9. State Farm presents the rules of the game. We're talking about legal formations. In this play, there are five men in the backfield. Is this a legal formation? As soon as a State Farm customer calls with a claim, I'm right on the phone to our claim center. We work as partners. Nancy gives me the information, then I contact our customer. We've settled hundreds of claims together. John's attitude is... You've got to be quick, and you've got to be fair. Quick and fair. At State Farm, teamwork is what it's all about. We make a great team. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're talking about legal formations. In this play, there are five men in the backfield. This is not a legal formation. Five-yard penalty against the offense. Rules of the game has been brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I built the entire city of Seattle on the roof of my car. See? Here's the space needle. Now my car has wings, feathers, and a beak. A little glue, a few seeds, just add water, and voila! It's not what you add on to our car that makes it more fun. It's what you take off. The Del Sol from Honda. Next Thursday, the Army Cadets march into North Carolina to take on the Duke Blue Devils at 8 p.m. on ESPN. Throughout the college football season, American Honda will be recognizing outstanding students for their athletic and scholastic achievements. The winner of this week's Honda Scholarship Athlete Award, Scott Ayler from Texas Tech. He's an electrical engineering major with a 3.11 grade point average. A three-year starter and the leading returning receiver who just caught the touchdown pass. Honda is proud to donate $3,000 to Texas Tech's General Scholarship Fund on behalf of Scott Ayler. Damon Benning along with Clinton Childs deep to receive in a 14-9 ball game. Nebraska special teams have to scare you to death. Benning from the five. And they stack him up at the 18-yard line. They busted the wedge. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. 
Guys, in the second half, watch for the Texas Tech defense to make some key adjustments. Their Mike backer, the middle linebacker, Zach Thomas, will play a little wider on the pitch. They're going to totally rearrange the responsibilities between the defensive end and the outside linebackers as to the quarterback on the pitch. And watch for them to gamble some with a strong safety, particularly on the option, headed straight for Tommy Frazier. Back up there. All right, Jerry, thanks. And we'll watch for those changes as the pressure goes back to Nebraska's offense. Phillips. Zach Thomas has him around the ankles at the 23. Mike, are those tough adjustments to make for kids at halftime? In the short week, again, you're, talking, you're looking at a team that's really disadvantaged by playing in the short week, but you can make those adjustments because they're basic. But what I hear Jerry saying is they want to take away Tommy Frazier. Let him pitch the ball and hope you can get some secondary support on the pitch, but Tommy Frazier's killing them on the option. At least if you pitch, you have the chance of a fumble. Out of the eye. Here's the option. And they did a beautiful job. Frazier had no place to go, couldn't pitch the ball, and Zach Thomas stuffed him again. I'm going to go back again to what Jerry Punch said, and I think it's a key for Nebraska. Now, if you are going to overload on the quarterback, then look for the fullback in Nebraska. Nebraska now has to establish the fullback. As you see the fake to Corey Schlesinger, now everybody's running to Tommy Frazier, Zach Thomas, the safety, his brother Bart, and then you've got the corners. And, and the outside backers on the pitch, so the fullback should be open for Nebraska. Third and five, and the crowd on its feet. Frazier with the pitch to Phillips. He's got the first down and more. Coleman brings him down at the 32. See, it's like poison. It's who do you want to who do you want to kill you? You want the quarterback or the tailback? And and you, you, it's really tough to be able to put people on both those people. There are assigned people, but to get them help. Phillips, 16 carries, 97 yards, had 126 in the opener. To me, the fullback becomes a player now for Nebraska. Blocking and carrying the football. Childs is in a tailback, and there's the fullback. There's the call you made. Schlesinger all the way to the 28-yard line. Mike, you got an excellent block, block in the center, Aaron Graham. But when you start to scrape off and play the quarterback and worry about the pitch, Tom Osborne has been around a long time and he knows you can't let the fullback go. That's what you have to start the option with. Key play right here just to give to Slester. See all the players from Texas Tech overrun the fullback. Now he's in the secondary. Look at look at number seven, the wide receiver, Reggie Ball, looking for somebody to block for Ron Brown, his coach, who likes to see people down in the secondary. A 49-yard game by Corey Slester, the fullback. Back to Childs, the tailback, as Phillips was shaking up the last time he had the ball to the 24, where Chris Ory, number 76, was in on the tackle. Zach Thomas, the middle linebacker, number 35, as he steps up, just overruns the play. You just get so anxious to work outside, and then you try to arm tackle. You're not going to arm tackle the Nebraska backs. And again, Mike, I said it before, the fourth quarter is Nebraska, so you've got to make hay in the third quarter. Second and six, another huge defensive stand for Texas Tech. Frazier on the option, no place to go, tries to cut it. Johnson. Uh, you may see the fullback three or four times uh, in a row now. I, I think you're going to see the fullback and you're going to see some play action passes because look at all the dark jerseys. You can count almost 10 people in that frame. Count them right there. So everybody is playing run, which means the play action and the fullback's going to be wide open. There are just too many folks for Tommy Frazier to find a run. Robert Johnson makes the tackle. Third and eight. But don't you think Texas Tech is playing it the way they have? Playing exactly the way Spike Dykes are on demand. On third and eight, Schlesinger, the fullback. There he goes again. To the 10, 5, 2. Sean Hurd saved the touchdown. But as Mike said, when you make adjustments, you can't cover everything. And what has been open is Schlesinger. Well, that's assignment football. You put against the eye, put people on the fullback, you put people on the quarterback and tailback. And Jerry Punch made a good point. You try to take away Tommy Frazier, but the fullback, Brendan Stye with a pull on the trap block, number 66, fullback wide open. Tailback over the top, touchdown, Nebraska. Phillips back in there and 
gets the score. Mike, I credit Texas Tech with some good adjustments, but you're playing against some gray beards on the other side. Those guys have been around for a long time, so they know where to go if you start sh shutting them down. And now look for the play action pass because the fullback's now set, quarterback set on the option, pitch. Now the play action pass is the next piece of poison you're going to take. They can bring a lot of weapons to bear. And the air has just gone out of Texas Tech's balloon. Boy, you got to admire the way they're fighting, though. Absolutely. Sealer on for the point after. He's got it. And Phillips capped an 82-yard drive all on the ground. The big play, two huge runs by fullback Corey Schlesinger, the senior. to get a great price at Best Buy. September 10th on TBS, Knight Riders roar on prime time. Urban, Erdhart, and hard-charging Rusty Wallace join the top drivers on the circuit, under the lights, going for broke, and attacking the tough angles at the short track at Richmond. It's prime time thunder. The Miller Genuine Draft 400, live September 10th on TBS. Below. Diagram? What diagram? Forget about that. You just need to know your players. You have to trust them. All right. Now you just fade back, find your target, and... Want some real excitement? Order ABC College Football Games on pay-per-view in addition to the game on your local ABC station. Check Friday's sports section of USA Today for games available in your area or call your local cable company today. I'm pretty sure it went in here. Corey Schlesinger, who did the majority of the damage on that last drive for Nebraska, 82 yards, all on the ground, took only three and a half minutes, and after being threatened, they are back up 21-9. to nine. Phillips got the touchdown, and more than 32,700 on hand here at Jones Stadium. Very quiet right now for Texas Tech. But they can be very proud of what their ball club has done tonight, and of their coaching staff and their young, young player. First down to kick. DeBuck and Mitchell are deep. And again, he drives DeBuck into the end zone, and they'll keep it there. Schlesinger got 65 of the 82 yards on that drive on two carries. Two hundred seventy one yards to seventy six. Nebraska in its opening game gave up 89 yards total but only eight yards rushing. Of course the sacks the eight of them they had came off of those rushing stats. Zebby Lethridge back to throw on first down airs it out throws into double coverage should have been intercepted and dropped by Kareem Moss. Almost identical to the play earlier where he threw into double coverage and was picked off, Mike. Well, you make mistakes as a redshirt freshman. Zebby Lethridge threw an interception earlier, and he came right back trying to get all of it back. You can't do that against Nebraska. Free safety just sitting in center field. Kareem Moss just doesn't handle the football. The only mistakes I've seen Nebraska make is they've dropped a few footballs today. And Baron Miles had no chance to get to the ball. He had excellent coverage on the intended receiver. Hands part into the ball game at tailback and gets a couple. Dwayne Harris, number 86, in on the stop. Some other scores tonight. Western Kentucky by 12, third quarter. Northern Iowa feeling a little, maybe a little let down from that Iowa State big win they had. Of course, Southwest Texas, pretty good football team. Here's another third and long for Texas Tech. Mm -hmm. 
Nebraska showing blitz back out of it. Lethridge with time over the middle, complete first down out to the 33-yard line. The catch made by Stacy Mitchell. Gain of 12. Mitchell caught one pass a week ago. He's only 5'5 five, five and 150 pounds. He is a little flea. 150 pounds. That's soaking wet with an anchor on him because he has to be lighter than that. Baron Miles just unloads on him. 5'5, five, five, 150. There, I see a lot of speed receivers in the Southwest Conference. And they got a bunch of them here. Lethridge trying to roll to the outside. Plenty of time. Now he's going to scramble again. And ducks under the tackle by Moss, got it up to the 38. Lethridge has been outstanding in his scrambling ability. He's turned in three big plays and has carried for 51 yards on the ground. They make you work for everything you get on those they? scramble plays. You pay a price as Tony Darden now is getting the education on the sideline. He's able to hear the play call, know what's going to happen, now look at the defense and see how they adjust to it. So that when he comes back in the ball game, he'll be better prepared. 7.19 to go, third quarter. Second and seven. Hansburg goes in motion. Nebraska may have been offside. Lethridge on the run again. Cuts it up midfield and slides down at the 47-yard line. We'll check the flag. It looked like Dwayne Harris, the left defensive end, jumped early. It would be a gain of 17 for the redshirt freshman from Lubbock. And it is against Nebraska. Mike, I'm going to say it again. I, I said it before about Syracuse last week. I thought they really grew into a team for Paul Pascaloni. They were behind 24-0, hung in there, and I think you'll see Syracuse have a big year. Texas Tech, believe me, is going to be a fine football team this year. They're well coached. They're young. They got bright eyes, and I'm telling you, they got skilled players. My hat is off to Spike Dykes. I mean, it's uh, a lot of football players in Texas, but look who you're recruiting against down here. He got some good players. Hands bar, absolutely nothing. And it was big number 99, Terry Keneally, who messed it up, and then Jared Tomich makes the tackle. You look at the inside play by Nebraska, just solid. They just control the line of scrimmage. But again, they have eight people around the football. Jared Thomas, number 93, with the tackle. Hanspard, who had 13 yards on his first carry, is five carries the last five times he's touched the ball, zero. Hasn't had much room to run. Second and 13. again and this time they get him coming from the outside Ryan Terwilliger with his second sack of the season. Ryan Terwilliger is the backup for Ed Stewart. He's a linebacker so they really don't have anybody to account for him and that's again when you have a red shirt freshman he can't sometimes check you out of a bad play and that was a bad play because they had no one to block Ryan Terwilliger. Good call by Charlie McBride the defensive coordinator and Kevin Steele the linebacker coach. Third and 18 against the defense. They just don't give it up very often. Lethridge throwing and dropped at the sideline. Sheldon Bass had a shot at it, but there is a flag down back behind the line of scrimmage. And it will go against Texas Tech. This one will obviously be declined and force the punt. Well, Lethridge has certainly thrown the ball better than the Texas Tech receivers have caught it. And it goes back again to the fact he got a quarter to watch. Number 75, Ben Kaufman is getting called for the holding penalty. Jared Tomich, number 93, being held. Kareem Moss will drop for Brian or Brad Cade's punt and stand back at his 15. Cade has punted the ball beautifully tonight. And another high spiral. Moss dipped at the 18-yard line and 
as soon as he touched the ball. Excellent downfield tackle. Marcus Coleman, the Raider back. Spike talked about him the other day, and he said he could play for anybody in the country. He has speed, he has size, and he'll hit you. And If you've got the ball, you don't want to hear that crack. No. Now, I wouldn't be surprised in the first down play action pass. Try to put Texas Tech out of their misery right here. 5.15 to go third quarter. McEvica and, and Phillips are the running back. This is Phillips. Got a good block to get outside. Makes a nice move to pick up five more still on his feet the 38-yard line. Tough run by Lawrence Phillips. Chris Ory chased him all the way downfield from his tackle spot to get him. Short week may be showing up a little bit now because they practice twice a day on Monday, once a long period of time on Tuesday. Now you're starting to see some sloppy tackling. Lawrence Phillips, number one. Block on Zach Thomas. There's a missed tackle right there. When you start seeing missed tackles all over the place, that becomes tired football players. And the player down is Sean Banks, the right side linebacker for Texas Tech. The other thing, Mike, Nebraska has that history with that huge offensive line of just pounding on you, pounding on you, pounding on you. And by the time you get to the fourth quarter, you just don't have anything left. Teams that stay with Nebraska are power teams that stay on their feet. Now, and it's easy to say you stay on your feet, but if you stay on your feet and don't get knocked off your feet, teams that beat Nebraska will be the teams or play with them that don't get knocked off their feet. But Texas Tech tonight, a gutsy effort here, but they're starting to wear down. What team would that be, the team that Well, stays? I'll tell you what, there's two very good teams in the league. There's a lot of good teams in the Big A, but Colorado, Bill McCartney's team has, has got a solid team playing a tough schedule. In Oklahoma, I saw them last week. They can run on defense. They'll match this Nebraska team speed for speed on both sides of the ball. Nebraska now with 291 yards rushing. Phillips has 119 on 18 carries, and it's vintage offense for Tom Osborne. Phillips gets a little breather on first and ten as Benning is back in at the eye back. Instead, they give it to Macavica, the second team fullback. He's up to the 44-yard line. Want to see some more good college football? Join us Saturday night on ESPN. 7 o'clock, our CFA primetime matchup. Number 20, Tennessee against number 23, Georgia. Then at 10 o'clock, we'll go out west as Arizona State hosts number 6, Miami. That's 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific time. Phillips back in on second and four behind Tommy Frazier. Phillips. 50, 40, look out, 20, touchdown, 56 yards for Lawrence Phillips, who is having a career night. His previous career high a year ago of 137 yards, he had 126 against West Virginia. Tonight, 175 on 19 carries. Mike, they ran right behind Zach Wieger, number 72, just with a very good turnout block. And once Lawrence Phillips was in the secondary, it was get the band ready because it's a touchdown. 27 to nine, they'll try to make it 28 with a point after from Tom Sealer. Knocks it through. When you see Nebraska play people, Mike, it's almost seeing like a light heavyweight fighting a big heavyweight in a championship match. Eventually, you're just going to get tattooed one too many times. Well, that's what's happening. I think they're just wearing Texas Tech down now. This is vintage football. Zach Wieger, right tackle, 72. Turnout block. Now he goes up the field for a linebacker, and Lawrence Phillips, once he's in the secondary, he's fresh because they're rotating tailbacks. So they not only pound you with that big offensive line, they keep fresh tailbacks. Here's a line coming off the ball. There's a little seam, a little cutout, off and running. Nebraska has had two consecutive 82-yard touchdown drives. 
Let me ask you a, a technical question. When you make the kind of adjustment that they did and got burned on the last series, can you guess on those adjustments? Do it once, not do it the next down, do it the third down, not do it the fourth? No, they're sound in what they're doing. And when Jerry was talking about the linebacker moving over a little bit to help with the quarterback, you know, that, that opened the fullback a little bit. But I, I think what you're seeing, Mike, is they're sound in what they're doing, what Spike Dykes is doing, but you're seeing a tired football team right now. This team is out of gas. I'm telling you right now, they're, they're gone. You, you can finish this one off because they don't have any legs right now. They're, they're tired, and plus, they're getting, uh, you talk about that heavyweight, they keep knocking them in the corner and punching at them. So they're a wore-out football team. They gave great, great effort. I don't say it's over, but I'll tell you what, there gets the rope stagger. Almost five yards a carry. The buck at the goal line. First chance to return one. The buck to the 25-26 yard line, but there is a flag down. So a good return may come back. The buck, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. Another one of those little bitty receivers. 5'8", 163. And this will cost Texas Tech. And Mike, you alluded to it earlier. When they, when they list a kid at 5'8", 163, you better believe he's about 148. Well, he's, he's at least 148, maybe a little bit lighter. We're trying to protect him in the program. Hopefully the other team will read <laughs> that and believe it. You better be fast at that, at that size. Oh, yeah. Not have pedestrian speed like Jerry Punch was talking about. <laughs> One of the new innovations in keeping players cool at missed. What Texas Tech with 4-11 to go third quarter takes over at its own 14. Crane gets the hit. Carry. Alton Crane with his best carry of the night out to the 32. Taking advantage of the fast upfield rush. Now Texas Tech is figuring Oklahoma or Nebraska is thinking they're going to rush the passer from the outside. And they're taking advantage of the speed rush. Watch bottom of your screen, the speed rush by number four, Troy Dumas. And they just took advantage of it. Just opened him up a little bit. Got the ball to Alton Crane and took advantage of Nebraska's defense. Let me look a week into the future with Oklahoma playing Texas Tech. I will bet you that Oklahoma has a tough game. Let's listen to Spike Dykes. First way it starts is to run the defense. Come on. You stay down there. He went outside of it. I think what they're suggesting there is that they made some moves on their own out there. They didn't run the defense that was called. Somehow had a bust on that last run by Lawrence Phillips. It's always a tough thing because the coach on the field is relying on the coach in the press box to tell him what happened. And a lot of times I'd be there and I'd say to, you, to the tackle, what happened? He'd give me one story, the guard give me another story, everybody gave me the wrong story. <laughs> and it looks like we have an injured player. We can't tell from this spot. It may be Mike Minter. Let's see what happens. Looks like he rolled up on his legs. Minter making the tackle, dragging Crane out of bounds. Maybe that or landed on his arm. I'm not sure which, but they're attending to him at the sideline. Minter out of Lawton, Oklahoma, a sophomore. Coaches say he knew exactly where to be the first day he arrived at Nebraska. Not only did he line himself upright at one corner spot, he lined the other corner up, told him where to be, and then showed everyone else in the secondary what their spot was supposed to be. Very bright young player. An Oklahoma high school player going to Nebraska. Wow. <laughs> I could talk about Spike Dykes and Texas Tech, and they're going to leave the Southwest Conference. He had some real feelings the other day. He said it's 80 years of records down the drain, and uh, he just wasn't real happy to see no. this end. Uh, he's a Texas guy, Texas guy, and he really believes in Texas football in the Southwest Conference. And this is the proposed league, but I don't think you're going to see a North-South. Now, we, we hear that you're going to, but... I don't think you're going to have that Nebraska-Oklahoma rivalry in. That just can't happen. There are too many traditional rivalries in there. If you go to a North-South division where you don't play everybody every year, well, there's going to be a lot of unhappy people. They've got problems. 
almost picked up by Dennis. The pass intended for Bass overthrown. An excellent coverage by the freshman from Bradenton, Florida, Leslie Dennis. This is one thing Tom Osborne said the other day. We wanted to change the defense, but if you're going to play an aggressive defense like we are now, you need speed at corner, and we had to go find it. We finally recruited speed at corner so we can play this way. Well, you know, they learned. They learned in the Fiesta Bowl, Florida State, Washington, and Don James coming back to Nebraska that speed hurt them. So once they learned it, they were able to recruit it, and now they're in business for the speed defense. Second and 10 for Zemi Lethbridge. Under pressure, throws just before he was hit again, intended for Bass, covered like a blanket by Leslie Dennis. Now Nebraska not coming so often at all with the blitz. They're going with a four-man rush and dropping seven into coverage. And there's the knee of Minter. Injury is the one thing you can't control in football. You're never the same team week in and week out because of injuries. It just takes its toll as Tommy Frazier sits and waits for his opportunity again. Third and long, Lethridge airs it out again, incomplete. Three straight incompletions. Dennis was like a second uniform, three straight plays on Sheldon Bass. And here's where Nebraska's using a lot of second teamers, too. So, given good playing experience to their second team, and no hug from Dick Winder this time. <laughs> Yeah, you don't hug him every time, do you? No, you, you got to discipline him. There he's, he's telling him a little bit that'll make him a better quarterback next week. Those are the ups and downs. Hug him, rip him, uh, hug him, rip him. <laughs> the last thing is Woody Hayes said, you know, pick him up before they leave the field. Something positive. Kareem Moss back to receive the punt. And a beautiful job by Brad Cade tonight. They just had an outstanding night as a punter. Let's go to Jerry Punch at the sideline. Jerry? Guys, the news is not very good for sophomore free safety Mike Minter. I just spoke to orthopedic surgeon Pat Clare, and apparently Minter has torn his left anterior cruciate ligament. Not good news at all. The young man sitting on the bench here, obviously very upset. His season is over for 1994. Back upstairs. Jerry, that's, that's terrible news for them, especially not only his intelligence, which uh, you would expect in a Nebraska football team that has produced so many academic All-Americans and has such a tremendous graduation rate, but he is their fastest player, has their best vertical lead. He is just a sensational athlete, and that really hurts to lose him. Back to the ground for Nebraska. Benning gets the carry up to about the 38-yard line. Let's go back to the Minter injury, see if we can see what happened. Just looks like Alton Crane, number three, just, there's his leg. It just looked like he rolled up on his knee. Could have also happened even before the contact with that artificial turf. You get the foot planted, and you can put all sorts of torque on that joint. That's the toughest thing about coaching is, you know, you see how hard they work. And when you get a player injured, it's just tough to handle. Second and five. Schlesinger, the fullback, another gaping hole up the middle, and Corey Schlesinger to his own 49 for a first down. Bart Thomas, the safety, had to make the tackle. Well, Corey Schlesinger's going to thank Tommy Frazier when the game's over because Tommy Frazier really is what made this open for the fullback. The success he had in the first half just opened up the fullback. The first phase of the option, you have to establish the fullback. Good block by the center, Bill Humphrey, number 51. To establish the fullback, Tommy Frazier's going to want run free. With the tailback, the next thing you're going to see. Frazier under pressure, and they got it. Back at the 41-yard line. Zach Thomas was in on the play again. And Corey Chandler, number 93, the first guy to get a hand on it, and Byron Wright also helped out. Tried to run a play-action pass. Tommy Frazier's going to fake here, but Texas Tech wasn't buying any play-action pass. Good pressure. They were able to sack Tommy Frazier before the throw. Chandler's another young kid, a redshirt freshman, 6'4", 252, from San Antonio. Frazier straight back to throw. 
plenty of time. Rifles one incomplete. And ever since the first quarter, Tommy Frazier has really been off. That was intended for Abdul Muhammad. Through behind the receiver. And uh, again, sometimes, and, I, and, and Tom Osborne mentioned it the other day, he said his quarterback and his team lost a little focus in that West Virginia game. They got ahead weren't challenged very much and lost a little focus. And you may be seeing the same thing tonight. Now for Frazier, six straight incompletions, and he's facing a third and 18. Three wide receivers set. Runs the option. The pitch to Benning. And Benning tripped up as he got to the Texas Tech. 48-yard line by safety, Bart Thomas, who got him with a sure tackle. Bart Thomas with a good tackle and stops this drive. And again, Spike Dykes is going to look at this tape, and he's going to see an awful lot of good things by his football team. There's a coach that's very proud of his football team tonight being outmatched, and they've been able to hang around here. Well, when you consider the number of freshmen and redshirt freshmen and sophomores he's got on this ball club, I mean, these this looks like a tremendous future for this team. They get better as the season went on last year, and they're just going to get better each week. DeBuck and Johnson wait at the 10-yard line for Erstad's punt. And now we have... Stop the clock with a minute 13 to go in the quarter. Nebraska has called a timeout. The Cornhuskers protecting their number one ranking ahead, 28-9. Getting through college. Scott Fried and Dr. Jerry Punch with you from Lubbock, Texas. And Nebraska getting set to kick it away on fourth and seven. Erstad. Flag is down, and Erstad gets his kick away. They'll kill the play. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards, repeat fourth down. That'll back him up five yards. That won't bother Erstad with the leg he's got. So the line of scrimmage now becomes the Nebraska 47. If he wanted to, he could still kick it out of the stadium. Nebraska with 375 yards rushing tonight. And Erstad knocks it into the end zone. Let's go to the studio on Chris Fowler. Chris? Guys, we've searched the country for a highlight and found one down the road from me in San Marcos, Texas. Northern Iowa going for a game-winning field goal, but Matt Waller's attempt is blocked by Vincent Reed. He also blocked a punt. The Bobcats win, so Northern Iowa, which beat Iowa State by two touchdowns Saturday, loses to Southwest Texas State. All right, thank you, Chris. And Texas Tech will take over after the punt at the 20-yard line. And Tony Darden has checked back in at quarterback. Texas Tech hustling out before Nebraska can break its defense, but they just get set in time. Darden under pressure, and he's sacked back at the 14-yard line. Let's check in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, I was up at the conference, uh, Commissioner Steve Hatchell. And Steve, uh, after 80 years of tradition, the conference is going away. Why the dissolution of the SWC? Well, Jerry, there's a lot of reasons for it, and I'm not sure that you could sit down and really say one or two. And it's, it's unfortunate, and it's uh, been building. And uh, the rough part about it after 80 years is that if you were to sit in our meetings and be part of what we're doing, you'd see that these are really wonderful institutions and great people. And I just think that a lot of circumstances over the years have accumulated to where separation became necessary, unfortunately. Now, this year, you still send your champion to the Cotton Bowl. But what about next year, but the, the final year of the conference? Well, we're trying to emphasize to everyone that we have two very, very significant years of competition in this conference. And uh, we have a lot to play for. We have 2,400 wonderful student athletes uh, on scholarship in our programs that uh, we're doing all we can to promote their abilities. And uh, we just want people to know that uh, before it breaks up, that we're going to finish out the 80 year and get in that 81st year and uh, do it with a lot of dignity and a lot of class. Four schools to the Big Eight, three to the WAC. What about Houston? Any idea where they may end up? Well, I think Houston has a lot of good leadership right now, and they're looking to be with the Southern Independents, and I think they'll have a home in 1996 as well. Steve, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Jerry. Mike? Third and nine. 
thank you, Jerry. And Texas Tech will get a first down to completion to Jason Lavender, who missed the opening game, catches his first pass of the year for 15 yards. Here's a kid who's an excellent athlete in high school. He was a three-time Kansas pole vault champion. And that is going to be the end of the third quarter of play here in Lubbock, Texas. And number one, Nebraska, leading Texas Tech 28-9. We'll be back to the hometown of Buddy Holly in a moment. Quarter, a redshirt freshman quarterback who showed a lot in his action tonight against Nebraska. Excellent scrambler, has a good arm, and I think a very bright future here at Texas Tech. Darden hands it off to Hanspart. Here's another kid that just given some good blocking and the right opportunity is going to pick up a ton of yards. He can run. He's an impressive running back, was recruited by everybody all over America. He chose to come to Texas Tech. And he's got a good future with Spike Dykes. Second down, six yards to go. There's Schlesinger, who's had a big night, the starting fullback for Nebraska. The numbers on hands part so far has not had a lot of room to run. Blitz. Darden throws under pressure and can't complete it. He just didn't have a chance. Good athletic ability. That's why you like to have a mobile quarterback. Ed Stewart on the blitz. Dwayne Harris, defensive end, 86. But even as fast as they came, watch the pressure. He's good enough athlete and able to move around enough that he avoids the sack, throws the football away. Good, smart hitting play by Tony Darden. He's out of San Antonio, Texas. Both of these redshirt freshman quarterbacks, record setters in high school. Four wide receivers set on third and long. Here comes the pressure. Unloads and too high intended for Bo Adams. Oh, when you're under that kind of pressure, it is tough to make the good throw, isn't it? When you have as good an offensive team as Nebraska has, a defensive team just put their ears back and take some chances. The outside pressure again. Ed Stewart, number 32, coming from the backside. Trying to put pressure on Tony Darden. Brad Cade will kick again to Kareem Moss. Cade, six punts tonight, averaged 42.5. They've all been high. Done a beautiful job. Here's another one, a little shorter. Moss. Loose ball, but he was interfered with. You can't come that close to the receiver. Sean Hurd, number 25. He didn't know whether to hit him or pull off. Exactly. So he did the worst thing he could do. He pulled up and hit him both. The man going downfield has the responsibility to be aware of where the ball is when the... Uh, Guy who's trying to catch it comes up. You simply have to give him room to make the catch. There's a look. Sean Hurd, he just tried to pull off, but he's just too close. Six feet is the line, and it's uh, the official is saying the uh, interfering with the opportunity for a fair catch. Even though they have not signaled fair catch, you still have to give him the room. Childs is in as the eye back. Picks up about six yards to his own 36-yard line. Our CFA Thursday night series continues next week, 7.30 Eastern. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Craig James will kick it off with the weekend kickoff show presented by Russell Athletic. Then we'll go to Durham, North Carolina as the Cadets of Army battle the Blue Devils of Duke where our Thursday crew will be joined by Bino Cook and Lee Corso. I'll be replaced in that game in baseball. That's like a 183 hitter being replaced by Dino or Mickey Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> That's very nicely said. <laughs> Frazier on the action. Keeps 45-49 yard line. So dangerous. Now that the fullback has been established inside, now Tommy Frazier's open again on the outside. And with about 13 minutes to go, you figure this may be Tommy Frazier's last series in here. 
no one on the quarterback. They were able to seal it inside. Finally, a tackle by defensive back McKinley, number two. Frazier, 13 carries, 83 yards. Nebraska with a first down at its own 49. Frazier to throw this time. Excellent coverage by Texas Tech. Two deep receivers in front of Reggie Ball. Never had a chance. You know what Tom Osborne probably is going through his mind right now. He knows Tommy Frazier's not had a good night throwing the football. Excellent job running the option. He's four for 14, so he wants him to stay in, maybe complete a couple passes, get through the night. Good feeling, but I'm sure he wants to get Brooke Berenger in, number 18, the backup quarterback, because when you run an option, you're one play away. You better have a quarterback in the bullpen. Turner Gill, who's done a nice job teaching Tommy Frazier. Matt Convicta, the backup fullback crosses into Texas Tech territory at the 49. Of course, Frazier on a couple of occasions hasn't gotten a lot of support from his receivers. He got off to the hot start, but has missed only, uh, he's hit only one of his last 10. A lot of drop passes for him early in the ball game. Played at Manatee High School in Bradenton, Florida, and Joe Canan was his head coach and had a lot to do with preparing him for Nebraska. Joe Canan used to coach college football at Eastern Kentucky. So he knows a lot about the option game. Third and eight. Texas Tech backs out of the blitz. This is Childs on the toss. Childs may have the first down at the Texas Tech 40 yard line. Childs is out of Omaha, a junior. They have always been so deep at the eye back position. Somebody goes on to the pros, and there's two or three guys waiting to replace him tonight. 404 yards rushing for Nebraska. 51 carries an average of 8.1. That'll get it done, won't it? And once they've had 400 yards, just make that 68. Yep, you can warm up the bus. It's over. Childs again spins out of a tackle, then hit it for 40. The impressive part of Nebraska's game is how their wide receivers block for the option. And Ron Brown, who coaches that position, he grades his players on point of attack blocks, knockdowns, extra effort. He calls them stones when they get big hits and blazers when they when they get a block that provides a touchdown play. So the receivers, as you look at Ron Brown, are always conscious of blocking downfield, and they're unselfish to open up these option plays. Second and nine. Tech with 10 men within three yards of the ball. Childs again on the straight handoff. He'll pick up five to the 35-yard line. Tony Daniels, one of those in in black shirts for the tackle. Clock working its way down, um, 11 minutes, 26 seconds. Frank Solich, who's the offensive coordinator for Nebraska with Tom Osborne, calls the plays, is 50 today. And I know you're going to be uh, have a birthday here real soon on Saturday, and I think you and Frank are born about the same time. Well, you've got one in December, wise guy. It's going to be 39 in December. That's right, me too. Looks like Texas Tech jumped early, and Frazier chased out of the pocket, throws downfield, has the tight end of the five, touchdown, Eric Alford! And I do not see a flag, which is unbelievable. was off sides by about four yards. Mike, that ball was thrown right on the money by Tommy Frazier to Eric Alford to tight end 88. A lot of jumping going on. Tommy Frazier with a little counter fake. Looks like he's going to run, and he pulls up, and he gets good zip on this football right on the target to Eric Alford for the touchdown. Alford missed a lot of time in uh, training camp with a bad knee. Makes his first catch of the year and has a touchdown. Sealer for the point after to make it 35 to 9. And he does. Tom Sealer has been perfect in conversions, and Nebraska starting to run away from outman Texas Tech. Holy morning, Marta. You see these people? They work for Gramercy Press, and their lives are about to change utterly. And how? I can't talk about it on the elevator.
just one sip of St. Pauli Girl's rich, imported taste is the start of a beautiful relationship. On the one hand, we gave it a wider stance for better handling, a computer model suspension, and specially designed 16-inch tires. So, a pair of these could come in handy. On the other hand, we thoughtfully designed each knob, button, and switch to be easily operated while you're wearing a pair of these. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. At America's truck stop, the new Dodge. It's an ordinary day at Gramercy Press. Books are getting edited, covers being approved, clandestine romances are clandestine. But the ordinary days are about to end. Why? Gramercy Press. ESPN's presentation of Thursday Night CFA is brought to you by Dodge. The more things change, the more things look like the new Dodge. And by MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. In the second half, Nebraska has done it the old-fashioned way. They've earned it. Drives of 82, 82, and 69, all for touchdowns. And I think we probably have seen the end of Tommy Frazier tonight. I would, I would expect that he will be out from here on in. DeBuck goes nine yards deep, and Texas Tech will have to take the ball at the 20-yard line. Let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. Guys, I'm with Meg Ritchie Stone, who became the first female ever to be a strength and conditioning coach in Division I athletics a few years ago at Arizona. And Meg, uh, your accomplishments with Desert Swarm in Arizona are well documented, but this past year you moved here to Texas Tech in the Southwest Conference. Why? Well, the reason I came here was because this is a very young, very, uh, very much a developing team, and we need to get our strength levels up, and we need to be able to get our speed up and obviously uh, tonight you see that youth coming out uh, but we've tried to put a big emphasis on this program taking it away from just bulk into speed and trying to look a little bit more at the quickness aspect of our program and that's one of the main reasons that I came here because this is a developing team and it's exciting to be part of that. The speed of Desert Swarm in Arizona is incredible. Now, if I'm a college football coach and I have you come to my program, how do you make my team quicker? How do you make them fast? Well, obviously, you make people quicker by moving quickly. You don't send them out for a mile and a half run. You, uh, you work on the first step movement. You work on speed development drills, and you work speed. Uh, and that way, hopefully, all those drills and speed work that you do in the uh, in training and uh, uh, lateral movement, straight ahead movement type of situation will show on the field. Dallas Cowboys use martial arts training for uh, explosiveness and balance. Do you use anything like that? No, we don't. We don't get into the martial arts. They were doing that a few years ago, and they've really stopped uh, stopped going down that avenue now. Uh, really, we're getting more into a, a real, um, almost like a sprint type um, of development. We've learned a lot from track and field of, about speed development, and uh, that's where a lot of our uh, strength and condition coaches are going now. Meg, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry and Eyelash. Congratulations. <laughs> Texas Tech going to come up short running the option on third down. There's Beringer, who uh, will probably come in on the next series for Nebraska. The crowd now chanting go for it on fourth and short. And I don't see the punt team yet. Yeah, you have nothing to lose here except for another touchdown. You don't make yeah. it. Might as well go for it. And they're going to talk it over. Timeout on the field. 9.17 to go in the ball game. We'll be back with Spike Dyke's decision in a minute. Legend has it that when Lenny needed some wheels for his family vacation and only wanted to spend a few pebbles, he went to Thrifty, just a stone's throw away. Today, you can still find a Thrifty car rental nearby with very neighborly rates. Simply check your local phone book or call 1-800-4-CARS. You see, Thrifty's been renting wheels at low prices in neighborhoods all over since the very beginning. Your neighborhood Thrifty car rental, historically known for low rates.
here's a camera tip. In order to get a nice, steady picture, one that doesn't jiggle or bounce around, remember, it's important your camera be mounted on a solid object specially designed to minimize vibration. Dodge Intrepid, running at, let's say, 85 miles an hour, would be a particularly good choice. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. Saturday, the rushing arsenal of Tennessee's volunteers take on the Georgia Bulldogs at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Yeah, he thinks it's over, too. But that young man, I'll guarantee you, was awake in the first half when Texas Tech was fighting hard and had a game of it. Well, fourth quarter, Nebraska wears everybody down. <laughs> We could all use a nap at this point. 9.17 to go. It's 35-9. And I think discretion being the better part of valor, Texas Tech has decided to punt from its own 29. Cade, another high short kick that Moss can't get to. Takes the Texas Tech bounce from a lot of bounds at the 30. We talked about this being Buddy Holly's hometown. Other than that'll be the day. Uh, do you know any of his other music? I know all oh, of his you? songs. Uh, right now, I can't think of one. <laughs> well, the crickets. Uh, go, give me a song when you're ready. Maybe, baby. Yeah, that's that, that was, was a good one. Yeah. Peggy Sue. That was a great one. Yeah, I think Peggy Sue was the best. Peggy Brooke Beringer comes in. 15 games in his career. You see the numbers. Tom Osborne says when Barringer is in there, there is not a lot of drop off from Tommy Frazier. Benning is the eye back. Barringer setting up. Nice adjustment there, Gordon. It's picked off. Bart Thomas with the interception and a late flag. Barringer tried to wait for his receiver to make an adjustment and waited too long. You talk about not much drop off. I think there's a big drop off between Tommy Frazier and the backup quarterback. Of course, Brooke Berenger hasn't had much of a chance to play, but he doesn't have the foot speed that Tommy Frazier here has. But here he throws off the back foot. Bart Thomas with the interception. Texas Tech picks up a penalty. Spike Knight's decision to punt the football. Good decision. Boy, that's a tough way for a quarterback to come in a ball game. First play, throw an interception. Now you got to stand on the sideline. Well, you, you want your next shot in there, which Tom Osborne will give him that next shot in there, and he'll be okay. Sat over there for three and a half quarters and then hits the field and throws an interception. Darden has Crane and Hobbs in the backfield with him. The go for Bass. He's covered closely by Tyrone Williams. And Bass hasn't been able to see daylight with the coverage that Nebraska's defensive backs have put on him. Talk about good coverage. Sheldon Bass, the freshman against Tyrone Williams, number eight. Tyrone Williams tries to get his hand on him, just kind of fades back into him and gets that off hand off. Bass, who caught eight a week ago, has no catches in this ball game. He was a two-way All-State player. At Odessa. Hasn't done much tonight. Crane trying to get outside. Turns the corner down to the Nebraska 24-yard line. Nice tackle by Eric Stokes. You don't see Nebraska players miss tackles, do you? No. And it's an early season, but the two quickest defensive football teams I've seen so far, Nebraska and Oklahoma, and about even. They both run so well. As you see, Eric Stokes, a sophomore corner out of Lincoln, uh, just really closed the gap. It looks like you got to play, and then the speed just catches up to you. Well, you hear the crowd go into sort of a crescendo, and it stops immediately. Third and seven for Texas Tech. Comes the blitz. Darden on low. It's complete pass down to the 17-yard line. Mitchell makes the catch. I like the way the quarterbacks for Texas Tech deliver the ball quickly. Tony Darden avoided the sack because he was able to get rid of the ball quick. A quick delivery. Number 11, Tony Darden. Sets up, throws Greg, the ball, Greg, and then somebody God. pressured him right from behind. Number six, Stacy Mitchell, that big, tall, strong target at 5'5", 145. And they will measure to the first down. Length of a football short. I don't think Spike is going to kick the foot. No, I, I wouldn't expect him to kick the field goal. He's going to 
try to get the first down, give this team a little more confidence. But I don't know if I'd take the ball off of the line of scrimmage. I'm not so sure I wouldn't take a quarterback sneak here. My best chance to get it. It was Ayler, the tight end, bringing in the play from the sideline on fourth and inches. You take that ball off the line of scrimmage, you get that quickness and speed of Nebraska a chance. Really, the only advantage you have, Mike, as you said, is in the interior line. You know those two defensive tackles are going to pinch inside, try to cut off the sneak. And there it is, and he's got it. Guarding to the 15-yard line. Players waving no, but he picked up like two, needing only a foot. Here's where a lot of people think the game is over and they lose interest, but coaches on both sides of the ball do not lose interest because they're coaching for the rest of the season. And even if you have backups in there, you're going to need those guys sometimes. Well, you're right. The game is over, but you are coaching right now. You're trying to find somebody who's going to make a play for you. Brain can't turn. Moss came up, put a shoulder into him at the 13. Touchdown that Texas Tech scored earlier was off the naked play where they showed flow one way by the running backs and the quarterback came out the backside naked. Maybe that's a play now that Texas Tech can go to with Tony Darden. You got to give Tech credit. They really played hard tonight. And they are still playing hard. Hitting the backfield, spins out of the tackle. Luther Harden, number 58, reserve linebacker, as Nebraska is down to its third and fourth team players at this point. And the first stringers with the rest of the night off can laugh about it. Thinking about the flight home. Nebraska with 498 yards in total offense. Texas Tech a surprising 241 against this Nebraska defense. Third and about seven. Jordan double pump and he tries to run. is an offensive lineman 20 yards downfield. His quarterback had already outrun him, but he hustled down there, got the ball, gets the touchdown. And now Davis for the point after. He knocks it through, and Texas Tech with a touchdown. 6.24 to go in the game. True confessions about calling circles from MCI friends and family customers. He asks for a lot of friends and family's names. I gave him my sister, my sister-in-law, my mother-in-law, my friend in Florida. It just wasn't worth it. Out of my 10 people, only one, I got the discount to make it easier, simpler. You want it simple? You got it. Just switch to AT&T and get AT&T True USA savings. Spend $25 a month on AT&T and we subtract 20% from your AT&T long distance bill. Switch now and save to anyone, anytime, anywhere in the USA, guaranteed. Simple is better. With AT&T, you save on calls to everyone. That's why two out of three MCI friends and family basic or primetime users will save more with True USA savings. I'm going back to AT&T. We'll switch you for free. Just call 1-800-PICK-ATT. We're standing by for your call. <laughs> switch back. Switch now. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Your true voice. Great action.
Ben's a shock. Full, full highlight. He just could go all the way. Yeah. NFL primetime, Sunday at 7 on ESPN. Come on. Let's do it. The Red Raiders of Texas Tech with a touchdown that have made the score 35-16 with 6.24 to go third quarter. Ben Kaufman with great hustle getting downfield from his left tackle spot and comes up with the fumble that really would have been a heartbreaker for Texas Tech. And that's what a young team needs. They need something positive in the fourth quarter. John Davis to kick it away to Benning and Childs who waited their seven. Turnable kick. Childs from the eight. Childs is drilled at the 19 yard line. Allen Wallace just unloaded. Holy cow. Wow. Allen Wallace left his feet and took his entire body into this hit. Watch this. Oh, jeez. He brought it off. And then some. That kind of a hit will get you some more playing time. Well, you mentioned, you mentioned how the coaches are looking for signs in the fourth quarter. Barringer has thrown one pass, intercepted. Makovic of the fullback hit at the line of scrimmage, doesn't get an inch. Zach Thomas. Tommy Frazier, the Heisman candidate, the first two games, he's accounted for seven touchdowns and rushed for 230 yards. Pretty good number. He's at, had his best when the game's on the line. The team seems to lose a little focus as they, they kind of control both teams they've played. But when he's at his best, I mean, he's as good as there is in college football this year. Quarterback. Bannon will get the carry. Big hole up the middle. Gets out to the 34-yard line where Bart Thomas hung on and made the tackle. Clock stopping on the first down with 5.37 to go in the ball game. And we have an injured player. We'll check on in a second. That's the left linebacker, Robert Johnson. Nebraska coming up, perhaps their most difficult game of the year against a very good UCLA team with J.J. Stokes. They have a great schedule. First two on the road, of course, you, uh, playing West Virginia in the early game and then here at Texas Tech, but they get UCLA and Lincoln, so that's a good place to have them. Pacific, Wyoming, Oklahoma State at K-State. Now, that'd be a little tough for everybody thinks. Missouri lost to Toss in the opener. Colorado at home, very difficult. Colorado team, Kansas at home and Iowa State at Oklahoma. 11:25. Buy a ticket to that one right now because that's going to be a very good football game. First and ten, Nebraska. Benning dancing into the hole and brought down as he reached his own 37. Mike, we talked about the 105 rule where every team right. could only bring 85 scholarships and how totally uh, I'm against that rule and, and the people that uh, made this rule. But in 1986, Nebraska had 270 football players out, and now they have 155. But 85 scholarships, 20 walk-ons you have to school. But this program, Nebraska and Texas Tech, are two programs that walk-ons have really made a contribution. And there's one player in particular in Nebraska, Jeff Sackler. Kowalski. He was a freshman wide out, uh, a walk-on linebacker last year, and he played in games last year in special teams. And Kevin Steele, linebacker coach, told me, he said, he's really a good player, but we couldn't even invite him back here. He pays for school on his own, right. comes out to practice on his own, and we can't even invite him back, and he played last year. Just a total rule that should be thrown out. Yeah, it, it just makes no sense. I mean, it's not costing you a dime to have these kids play. Tried to hit the tight end, Tim Carpenter, and missed him. Texas Tech, as you said, also has some outstanding performers who have been walk-ons. Art Alton Crane, who started at running back. Todd Walker, the fullback. Scoville, our best receiver. Bart Thomas, the free safety. Both kickers who have done a good job tonight. I mean, th these are just the kind of things. Matt Shaw is one of the most interesting stories to me. He was a walk-on and was the 10th string tight end when he walked on, has fought his way all the way up the depth chart, and is now the starting tight end. You're not going to have success stories like that anymore. 
why and why not. Yeah, and you make rules in a conference room by people who don't really understand the game of football. And they make these rules, but uh, we are a land of opportunity, and you take the opportunity away from walk-ons. But I'll tell you, as you go into this further, the football coaches haven't spoke with one voice. And I, I blame a lot on the head coaches all over the country. The basketball coaches are unified. When they speak, they speak as one. Now, they lost one coach. They got it back in a part-time coach. They lost two scholarships. They got one back. Football's lost. They went from 80, uh, 95 to 85. They've lost visits from 80 to 56. They've lost a recruiting coordinator, part-time coaches, two GAs. Football coaches have been sleeping. Hey, and this is the sport that makes the money for every other program, unless you're a major college basketball school, and you can make money on that, too. But everything else comes out of football. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Doctor? Guys, you're talking about the walk-on program. When Nebraska started classes on August 23rd, they had their 105 players. They had their 85 scholarships and 20 non-scholarships. They added 42 walk-ons. Here in Lubbock, Texas, Texas Tech added zero. They were not allowed to add a single walk-on here in the school year because of the Title IX gender equity issue. They thought they would mess up their percentages. Their athletic director said, nope, no walk-ons. And boy, that really handcuffs the coach even being able to practice. Well, I think that's the big part of it, Jerry is that you have certain sequences to practice with, certain number of players that you need to practice to run scout teams, to mimic the other team's offense and defense. When you take those kids away, you can't do it the way you used to do it. Well, you're right, Mike, and there's two points there. Uh, number one, the athletic director here is really making Spike Dykes work uh, at an uneven pace. I mean, if you don't let him have walk-ons, I mean, you're really hurting his program. And the second thing is, people out there sit and say, well, pros only have 50 players, but the pros are developed. You're trying to develop players in college. That's the difference. Third and five for Nebraska and Barringer. The Texas Tech 31. Up. Hit first by Ryan Donahue, number 45, and Chris Ory, the defensive tackle. So it's going to be fourth and three. I think if I spike Dykes, I'd knock on the AD's door on Monday and say, hey, they have 155. We're, we're a little shorthanded here. We need some help. There seem to be so many issues now that are... They seem only to be there because they're politically correct, and it doesn't make much sense to me. I agree. Well, go out to the mailbox. I'll have some, I'll have some on Monday. Well, that rule has to be thrown out to 105. Well, I think it's a dangerous rule. Injury-wise, the whole world. Childs breaks the seam, and he's gone. Excellent blocking for Nebraska. Childs turns the corner and scores. Like we talked about Brooke Berenger earlier, we threw the interception, but he was able to get a drive here in the fourth quarter to take his team for a touchdown. Good confidence builder for the backup quarterback. Nebraska now has 491 yards rushing. Oh, and they don't even look like they're tired. No. Well, they get him in chunks. Their all-time record not being threatened, 677 against a New Mexico State team. I was getting worried. I thought you were going to say it was against me when I was coaching. <laughs> Felt like it when I was coaching against them. Clinton Childs, number 26. Brooke Berenger with a down-the-line option. They take the quarterback right up. But again, look at the receivers and the blocks. Riley Washington, number three with a block, and I'm sure Ron Brown's going to say to him when they look at the films, that's the way I want it done. 42-16. Let's check in with Jerry again. Doctor? Guys, in all fairness to Brooke Berenger, he's a young man who's had trouble with his right arm. Apparently, he's had some elbow problems for the past couple years, including a tendonitis. And when you come in off the bench cold, as he did in an early series, threw his first pass and got it picked off, the coaches knew they didn't want to have to have the kid to put the ball back up again. They let him just put a drive together on the ground and try to build the kid's confidence back up. The young man will be a very good quarterback, but right now they're a little bit concerned about his throwing arm. That chronic tendonitis just doesn't want to seem to go away. Mike? You know, Jerry, he hurt that first as a high school baseball pitcher and uh, if you can really mess up your arm throwing sliders and curveballs and throwing in cold weather and once you get it it's very difficult to get rid of they considered surgery for him but they said it would take a year to recuperate from it and it might not even work so they just tried to rest it when they could Erstad will kick to DeBuck and Mitchell Tommy Frazier with a big smile on his face he likes to see Beringer succeed too
Nebraska's touchdown drives tonight, 78-98, 82-82, 69-81. That'll take a little of the starch out of your collar. Coming up next, Dan Patrick and Gary Miller standing by. You'll get caught up on the day in sports, the top stories, the latest on the strike situation, the men's quarterfinals at the U.S. Open, and Danny Manning's new team. I was at Kansas when Danny Manning was there. What a fine basketball player. Took his Kansas team and Larry Brown to the national championship. I'll be interested to see where he will play next year. Starts with a P. Well, you already know. <laughs> Sony Cavazos, the third quarterback into the game for the Red Raiders of Texas Tech, a sophomore, 6'4", 195. Got two redshirt freshmen and a sophomore, all of whom can play. Cavazos back to throw, throws out in the flat. Complete to Scoville, and Scoville's forced out of bounds to the 29-yard line to stop the clock with 1.32 to go. It's out of Wallasco, Texas. This team will be in the thick of the Southwest Conference run. They have a shot to win that conference. I believe you. There's some outstanding young talent on this ball. Take a look now at tonight's Wrangler players of the game. Lawrence Phillips, who had 175 yards rushing average, 9.2, and got two touchdowns. And for Texas Tech, especially effective in the first half, Zach Thomas with 14 tackles. A couple of them huge plays to stop, stop Nebraska drives. Cavazos with a great throw, the catch by DeBuck. Now, Cavazos does not have the big arm, but he's got the touch, and that was a beauty. Beautiful touch pass. Good reception by Matt DeBuck, and there's just no quit in this Texas Tech football team. Matt DeBuck, concentration, looking the ball into his hands. No, he was in, Boone! So spot the ball at the Nebraska 42, and Texas Tech trying to come back and get some kind of a score. Hands part, couldn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He's had no room to run tonight, and John Hess and Aaron Penland got in on the tackle. Texas Tech has one timeout left, and they're going to have to spend it with an injured player, or will this be an official's timeout? It's official. And the injured player, Ed Hendricks, the right guard, who's been a backup the last couple of years. Really, the offensive line did a pretty nice job, I thought, tonight for Texas Tech as far as pass blocking to give these guys some time to throw. I thought the, the, the whole ball club, you could say, well, you must be crazy. They got beat 42-16, but you have to take into consideration this is a young football team, freshmen, sophomores, two redshirt freshman quarterbacks in, in Nebraska, one of the best teams in the country, Oklahoma coming in. Spike Dykes is doing an excellent coaching job here. I was going to say, look who just beat you. Cavazos throws almost intercepted. Darren Schmedeke would have had a touchdown. That's the problem with a touch passer. You throw it deep out, you got to have a gun to get it there. Hang it up there. Mike, you're talking about it. we live in a society where no one wants to give anybody credit. It's always, what did you do wrong? And it's not a case of what Texas Tech did wrong tonight. It's a case of they ran into a better football team, made some mistakes, but Nebraska played a lot better. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Clock stop with 33 seconds, third and 11 for Texas Tech. Here comes the blitz. They back out of it. Cavazzo throws into Buck, makes the catch. He gets down to the 35-yard line. He's going to be a couple of yards short of a first down. And the clock running. And they'll spend their last time out with 18 seconds to go in the ballgame. You think I'll see many passes uh, in Georgia, Tennessee? Oh, yeah. Air will be full of footballs. Timeout on the field back in a moment. Yards rushing to 141 for Texas Tech. Fourth and three. Cabasas trying to pick up the first down hit as he throws. It's incomplete. And that'll leave 13 seconds to go. Nebraska will take over the football. Mike, you talk about in the second half of the short week by 
by Texas Tech and what Nebraska does to you in offense 337 of their yards total yards of 579 total yard for second half yards so they punish you in the second half they just wear you down and there's no way around it as you mentioned unless you are a, a team like Oklahoma that can match them physically uh, it's very difficult to stay with them the second half belongs to the Huskers Schuster straight up the middle the fullback still on his feet to the 32 yard line Brian Schuster the sophomore from Fullerton Nebraska the clock will stop on the first down well, that just adds to the total. Another 33. There were 500 yards rushing against an eight-man front. You asked Tom uh, the other night, uh, eight-man front concern you? He says, no, once you get through it, there isn't much left. There's only three left. That's it. Nebraska protects its number one ranking and wins 42-16. Coming up next, Sports Center. Dan Patrick and Gary Miller, they'll get you caught up on the day in sports. The latest on the baseball strike. Is there any hope? The quarterfinals of the U.S. Open. Danny Manning's new team. Our final score, Nebraska 42, Texas Tech 16. For Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch, and our great entire ESPN crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Lubbock, Texas.